Welcome to the Botswana National Sports Stadium here in the capital, Khabarone, as our next game is Kenya up against the Islanders, Madagascar. That is uh, East Africa meeting the island of Madagascar. And, uh, this game was billed as the big event. Unfortunately for Madagascar, they were disappointing in their second pool game against uh, the Kenyans, who really dominated that encounter. We expect more from Madagascar. I'm sure so do they. And we uh, look in anticipation for this game. Uh, Madagascar will be a little bit happier about their performance today, coming over Zimbabwe 24-5 victory. Kenya starting off with the day with a 43-7 victory over Zambia. As we previously said, the Kenyan teams are the the Kenyan team is the favorites here. Grace Adiambo, number 10. We've seen her performance. Number 12, Philadelphia Orlando, got a hat trick in the game against Zambia. She's the captain. Lots of experience having played at the Hong Kong Sevens and in the Gold Coast. From Madagascar, quite a few talented players in the team. In particular, we can look out for number six, Jean Rahalinumana. Uh, we're all set here at the National Sports Stadium in Gaborone. There's uh, Kenya, who have uh, really not broken a sweat here in the Sevens tournament. And uh, crying out for some team to take them on. A very narrow uh, Madagascar and giving an opportunity for Kenya to run at them. Still going. As they approach the 10-yard line, it's a nice strong carry from Omondi, and the recycle is good. Great stepping from Okello, and just a little bit scrappy on that occasion, but still holding on. There's the captain. He has a beautiful little run, and uh, a lot quicker than you think, very deceptive. And Philadelphia Orlando will get in for the first try for her nation. Easy as you like. It's just under a minute gone, Kenya on the scoreboard. Captain Philadelphia Orlando was a bit quiet in day one, but today she's really stamping her mark on this tournament. Had a hat trick previously, the first try. Very good work from the build up there from uh, Janet Tokello. Janet Tokello finding Odi, finding Philadelphia Orlando. Philadelphia Lander with an easy run in. As you said, Dirk, deceptively pacey. She's got a good stride, good gait with her, and she's very good at running strong. How good is that conversion? The try was uh, scored in the corner. That uh, is as good as you'll see. The change of pace. She's gone inside, outside, back to self. She knows she's got the power as well. Ball in the, in the left hand, which means that she's ready for that handoff. And good luck if uh, Philadelphia Lander hits you in the face because she's a big, strong girl. And um, perfect execution from the captain of Kenya. As uh, Madagascar putting huge pressure on the Simbas. But a chance now for them to counter again. 50-50 ball is Madagascar's. He has a chance. Looking for the support runners, they're there. Rokotoa Rison is uh, the player who takes it to the 22. Kenya really putting in the big tackles. There are some numbers on the wide side here, or the near side rather. Still going. inevitable that was going to happen if it was not going to be foot in touch it would have maybe been a forward pass they've been flirting with the touch line these uh, players and that's good defense from uh, looks like uh, the captain as well well Dirk, that was a very fine run by gina rajana Malinafa. just showing that when when the Kenyans are put under a bit of pressure. That defensive line is not holding as much as it should. They haven't really been tested this much in this tournament. And when teams run at them, they do look at their uh, at sixes and sevens when it comes to their defensive pattern. I'm all for supporting the underdog, but how good was that defense from the captain of Kenya? Using the touchline as the extra lady. 
Oh, he has a chance to see some pace. And it looks like she's got it. And it's uh, going to be a run-in for Omondi. Michelle Omondi is going to go all the way. A full run of the field. And uh, that will tire her out. But uh, nonetheless, great work from Kenya. Got the win off the line-out. Went wide straight away. And uh, just put Michelle Omondi away. Just as we were talking about the defense being at sixes and sevens, there we show the power and the pace and the commitment that this Kenyan side has. Look at her striding out there, Michelle Omondi. Looks like she's out in the Serengeti like a gazelle. Fantastic pace there. Very strong finish there by Kenya. Gazelle-esque here in Khabarone, Botswana. As... Uh, 12 points to nil now Kenya lead Madagascar it's good to see a local support here for all the various sides here not just the home home team but there's a lot of international supporters here seeing the Kenyan supporters very happy with their team yeah, I've seen some Zambian supporters as well that uh, had even made the trip across or have found them some regalia and live here in uh, Botswana but it is good to see supporting uh, women's sevens rugby here in Gaborone. There's an unforced error again. So Kenya holding up in defense and will now have the input to the scrum. Madagascar has shown a bit of promise when they have the ball in hand. Unfortunately, an unforced error there. When we talk about it, we'll keep on talking about it. And sevens rugby possession is the key. You can't afford to be giving away possession. When you've got the ball, look for all the opportunities and you've got to try and capitalize but well, unfortunately, a knock on there by Madagascar, giving Kenya a lovely attacking opportunity. Oh, straight into contact, and uh, no team backing down on that occasion. Again, a forward pass. So uh, the captain at fault this time, just apologizing to her teammates, is uh, Philadelphia Lando. You know, Dirk, as, as impressive and as drilled as this Kenyan side is, I have to say that some of the passes that they make out of hand seem to be a bit 50-50 and not as accurate as they could be. This team could punish teams a whole lot more if those balls went to hand. Well, I, I think that also on the other side is that it, that's the example for the other teams who are trying to find a way on how they can beat Kenya. Well, I've got a funny feeling. You put them under pressure, play them at their own game, you've got half a chance maybe. Is that the key to beat Kenya? It might be the key, yes. Yeah, they go, Kenya. There's that uh, unforced error again. So every now and again, as much as we take nothing away from their skill level, which I'm assuming that in any sport or professional level, is those little mistakes is that if you put pressure on them you'll bring those out and there's another little knock-on we've seen a forward pass we've seen a drop ball and uh, maybe Kenya also starting to tire a little bit and if I was one of the coaches of the opposition teams looking at how to beat this a fantastic Kenyan team definitely the pressure putting pressure on them in that defensive line forcing those 50 50 passes is the way to go well you could think about it while you Graze the grass as a hippo on the Okavango Delta on how you can beat Kenya. Um, beautiful wildlife here in uh, Botswana. That looks offside. There's going to be advantage here for Kenya. mistake again so that'll take us to half time and the build-up was great but uh, just falling short and literally one meter short of the try line when it comes to 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 very competitive tournaments and uh, this one is slowly starting to become more and more competitive as it's developed throughout the years one of the things that needs to happen is that execution Dirk, and that those the finer movements of the game 
those small little touches and unfortunately Kenya is not executing as well as they should and I suppose it's a tribute to Madagascar that the score is 12 to Kenya and 0 to Madagascar. Madagascar has been up in the faces of this Kenyan side. Looking at the statistics, definitely a lot of tackling we made there. Madagascar 13 tackles, Kenya 10. Let's look at the visits to opposition 22. Madagascar only making it once to the Kenyan 22. But we look at Kenya going in three times but only converting two of those opportunities. Uh, turnovers one, we know that the Kenyans traditionally are very strong when it comes to contesting those rocks and malls. They've won one turnover. Definitely a very good game on our hands. Handling errors, we've talked about that three for each side these teams need to be a little bit more impressive with their ball handling they've got to keep their balls in hand great crowd out there kenya's got lots of support you see some ugandan flags as well people were waving they can see themselves on the big screen happy days out there you notice as well that there were so many people in the stand and all this is him, he was sitting all by himself. Mm. Mm. Like you, he doesn't have many friends. Except that you're forced to sit next to me. There you go. Right, well, can Madagascar pull back here? It's a total different position they were in when they played Kenya on day one uh, by this stage in the game they were dead and buried and However, that, just a reminder if uh, you hadn't watched that game kenya beat madagascar 42 nil completely dominant and this is more competitive the madagascans have learned from playing kenya last time well i'm going to be fair i think kenya still dominating but uh, they've made lots of mistakes and uh, there's still a chance Accept the kickoff and it's put them under real pressure. Have a look at the captain, Philadelphia Orlando. She's right in there and uh, it will force the scrum down. So, Kenya, as the half time has started, pressure right back on the Madagascar team. I'm sure the Kenyan coach Kevin Wambua would have told his girls that execution is key, put them under pressure, and they're going to want to start the second half with the right level. Well, here they go. That's the one uh, area that they can learn from is while they're a little bit tired is to get rid of those little basic errors. So uh, he has an opportunity to show that. And there's a try in the corner as uh, the number 15, Michelle Omondi, will get in for what I think is her second try. One was a full length run of the field in the first half. This one probably a little bit easier. Up indeed, Michelle Amondi showed us earlier lovely pace there. This one was a little easier. Well worked try, simple, down the hands, looked at the defender, ball in the right arm, which is her left arm, ready to fend an easy score in the corner for Kenya. Taking the score to 17 for Kenya, Madagascar nil with the kick to follow. successful they've uh, been really tough these kicks from the corner not easy to execute has Amy ever attempted uh, kick kick conversion no Dirk, Dirk, some of the if I was to try and do that it would Stay be a bit of like my golf game lots of shanks there only shanks that I like are the lamb kind yes well 17 points to nil Kenya over Madagascar here at the National Sports Stadium in Khabarone Botswana well accepting the kickoff that didn't go 10 but uh, it's possession that's what they need and they need some go forward ball which they haven't had much of one visit to the opposition 22 which resulted in a full length run from Kenya the other way a speculative backhand pass and the knock on well, the referee is called uh, line out so Oh, you got some good strong runners there. We had a good run there by Perry. Oh, 
as uh, they take play halfway between the 22 and the 10 yard line of Madagascar numbers are plenty on the far side we needed someone to straighten which was there but uh, the recycled ball now slow just got to go through the hands nice and basic still going now 10 short can she get a hat trick Michelle Amondi still going and the pick up and go it will be another try this time to uh, Janet Okello who will get over for Kenya it's relentless pressure here from the Kenyans and uh, Madagascar unfortunately succumb again I have to say that it's been very good defense by this Madagascan side holding out the Kenyans. The Kenyans have had to work hard to dig deep as we can see that. We can see Adiam, oh that was fantastic running there. Adiambo is just falling short of the line and the presence of mind by Janet Tekelo to pick up that ball and score the try. Well, conversion to come. It's unsuccessful. The question is, if you were sitting on the sideline trying to remedy this problem, I think maybe the one issue is that, it's easy to say, Madagascar giving Kenya too much space to run at them. Indeed, indeed. And the Kenyans you've shown, they're quite devastating with ball in hand. Unless you put pressure on them, you give them that room, that time, they're going to build up that play, and they can be very patient in how they do it. The Simba of Kenya watching on looked like a little wry smile on his face as well enjoying the action from the touchline well still one minute 45 left in the game lots can happen he has a chance for madagascar it's a great little run but uh, turnover ball again for the kenyans it's numbers captain gets it out wide and uh, the first will run from uh, Mura, Lynette Mura, who takes it into the Madagascan half. It's, uh, scrappy, they're going to have to come all the way back and rebuild again. That built all the momentum. A little goose step as well from the Kenyans. Loving their play here in Gabarone. And there's the offload. He has a hat-trick chance, and can you believe it? Michelle Amondi will get a hat-trick here in uh, Gaborone. Can you believe she's taking this last time? I can't. Very good, Sam. Well, it is a hat-trick nevertheless. Took a bit of time. Indeed, that's just a bit of gamesmanship, a bit of brinksmanship that comes into the sevens game. The Kenyans completely dominating. They're assured of their victory here with less than 30 seconds. Oh, my goodness, right in, post, in front of the post. Can you believe she missed that kick? Can you believe it? Well, I'm sure the Madagalis weren't really worried about how long she took to put the ball down because I honestly think that they've had enough of this game. Well, it was a very well-worked try. Kenya had been pushed back. Uh, we see... Fantastic work by Camilla, Cynthia, and that offload that she did. It was a fantastic performance here by Michelle Lomondi. Michelle Lomondi has been on fire in this game today, Doug. Yeah, I, I do feel sorry for the Madagascar team. They've tried hard, but uh, Kenya, just too good. But they'll uh, take a lot out of the second performance, like we said, Sam. Uh, yesterday, they went down heavily. 41 points to nil to this very Kenyan side, but they've put up a great fight. Yes, they still haven't put points on the board against them, but uh, it shows uh, their ability to get better. Can they maybe finish off with a try? Well, Madagascar definitely improved much better performance by them, and that's what happens throughout these tournaments. Greater exposure, greater appreciation of the game, and they can only improve. scared of taking the Kenyans on physically either oh, there's the little mistake sad for Madagascar that'll bring an end to this game and Kenya will win comfortably 27 points to nil
but uh, a great effort from Madagascar. It's got to be said, though, the Simbas of Kenya, just too good here in Gaborone. I think that last passage of play pretty much summarized the game. Sahindra Halala showing the strength, showing that purpose, but uh, not having the execution that's necessary with that knock on. Kenya, very happy to have this victory. They are the number one ranked team in this tournament. And 18 tackles made by Kenya. The Madagascans definitely made them do some work here. Kenya, the turnovers, one, two. Uh, handling errors as well. It started to get a bit scrappy, particularly in the second half of the game, with each team having quite a few handling errors there. Kenya, three handling errors, Madagascar, four. This is into opposition 22. Madagascar only went once in, but didn't have that opportunity to score any points. Well, another great performance from Kenya as uh, they dominate here, like we've spoken about. But, uh, it has been a great performance from them so far. They got a few more games to go, and we'll have to wait and see how that goes. Let's see and hear from the captain of the Kenya Simbas. Thank you guys. With me is the Kenyan captain, Philadelphia Orlando. Now, Philadelphia, do you feel respected as a woman in Kenya who plays rugby? Yes, a lot. They love us and they appreciate us and they're really behind us. Yeah. Fantastic. Now, going into the playoffs, what would you want to improve on? Uh, we need to work more on our defense because, as you can see, uh, in the semis, uh, in the quarters, we conceded one try. Our target in this tournament was not to concede any try. So we're still going to work hard. Uh, as a team to build the strength of our defense all right the, of all the best for your next playoff thank you so much coming up next it's tunisia and uganda the second semi-final the winner will go on to meet kenya in the final and of course these sides did meet yesterday on that occasion it was a 10-10 draw between uh, these two sides so all to play for as tunisia come up against uganda in semi-final two of the 2018 rugby africa women's sevens Um, yesterday these two teams did bring the best out of each other at the end of the 14 minutes no winner but of course this being a knockout game if that is the case again we will go into extra time so a winner will be determined between these two sides who do you think it'll be well very competitive like you said johan no winner yesterday these two teams are ranked two and three after the pool stages yesterday tunisia pretty good team and I think they're just going to edge it. Uganda struggled a little bit in their game that they played earlier on today against Senegal, winning 12-5. People would have thought that Senegal would have been too weak for the Ugandan side, but the Ugandan side has been very strong and uh, not as strong as we thought, but Tunisia is my pick. Yeah, Tunisia, if you look at some of the players that have really stood out, Amal Darduri in the number one jersey. She picked up an injury earlier today. Hopefully she's able to continue. But look out for Kulut Gamir in that number three jumper. Such a strong player. Very, very difficult to bring her to ground. And she is going to be very important for this Tunisian side. Also for Uganda, Emily Lukura as well as Peace Merembe two of their standout players who will be looking to make a big impact here and both these two teams will know how important this encounter is it's Tunisia to get us underway and for them Amani Garbi in the number six jersey Tunisia playing from right to left in their white and red strip and Uganda receiving the kickoff struggling to deal with it originally but now finally managed to get it under control picked up at the back by Juliet Nandawula Handed away to Charlotte Medulla, the captain of this Ugandan side. A lady with plenty of experience. Now it goes from Emily Lukuru into the hands of Peace Merembe. Still available for Uganda. Played there was Emily Lukuru, but the referee allowing play to continue. Uganda trying to run their way out of their own half. A little bit undecided for Oroma. Eventually she decides to go with Peace Merembe down that left-hand side. Tunisia's defensive structure is holding nicely for the moment, not allowing anything to get through at the moment. Now it's Grace Alma trying to get out of their own 22. This is very, very good defensive effort from Tunisia, forcing Uganda backwards. 
Now perhaps an opportunity down the right hand side and uh, that, for, that kick was definitely forced but this could work out very nicely for this Ugandan side. Not any Tunisian player back and it's Charlotte Medulla giving chase eventually. Tunisia get back in the form of Chaima Arbi. That could have been danger for this Tunisian side but still a very, very good net result for Uganda. A very good result indeed. Charlotte Medulla, seeing that the, they were pinned back in their own 22, no option there, but for the kick, it was a good kick and chase. A fantastic cover defense coming across for Tunisia. Charlotte Medulla giving her team the upper hand now, moving across from 122 to the other with an opportunity there, forcing that error, the knock on by the Tunisian team there, and uh, Uganda with an attacking tra or tracking scrum in the Tunisian 22. Tunisia scrum re very good earlier today against Botswana. Can Uganda counter the strong forward pack of this Tunisian side? They do get the ball out of the back. It's a little bit messy as Gray Salma picks up. Now it's Medulla spreading the ball wide of this Ugandan backline players. Nicely secured by Uganda. Picked up by Lukuru into the hands of uh, Emmanuel Roma. Uganda just need to remain patient here yeah, and they've managed to go over for the first points. It's Emily Lukuru who goes over and this is a really, really good score for this Ugandan side. And Tunisia will have to first try and get their hands on the ball before they can start, think of, start thinking of scoring points. Very well worked try there. That came from the initial kick by Charlotte Medulla who got that, forced that error, the scrum working well across the field initially thought might they might have run out of space there but emily Lukuru with that strong pickup and scoring the first points of the game uganda five tunisian nil uganda yesterday not able to convert a single one of their tries and uh, this time it also not going over this try is such a well worked try because they started deep inside their own 22 they managed to work their way out there and then it was emily lakura getting the reward getting a name on the score sheet first up halfway through this first half this kick from uh, uganda not going the 10 meters and now we can see finally what tunisia have to offer with ball in hand expensive mistake there by tunisia ball has to go the 10 meters Islam Abdallah down the right hand touchline. Tried to get the ball back on the way on the inside, but uh, lost it in the process. Penalty going the way of Uganda again. Nothing seems to be going the way of the Tunisians, and their coach not pleased with what he's seen so far in this game. Well wrapped up in the tackle there by Islam Abdallah. And again, just uh, breaking down this defense of Tunisia, a little bit by little bit, waiting for the gaps to expose themselves. Manuel Aroma now with a nice little gap, a good last minute tackle by Islam Abdallah. She just had to hold her in. And the penalty again going the way of Uganda. Ill discipline from Tunisia early on. And all the bench can do is just look on anxiously at the moment. Charlotte Medulla, the experienced veteran. And the penalty now, this time going the way of Tunisia. Holding on was Charlotte Medulla. And can you, Tunisia turn this into an 80 meter score? Amani Garbi. And there we see the strength of uh, Kulud Gumir. A case of the bus is full. This now, Tunisia with the plenty of opportunity down this left-hand side. Chaima Arbi just needing some support, and she ran out of it. Easily picked up by Grace Alma. <laughs> Juliet Nandawula.
Tunisia still making their way ever so closer to that try line, and this will be the score. It's their important player, Armani Garbi. She's been so influential for them in this tournament, and she goes over for their first point just before the halftime break. That is a crucial score for the, no the North Africans. If ever you thought a person was going to do it for you, for Tunisia today, Armani Garbi would have been the top pick. Armani Garbi has been a strong performer throughout this tournament. Look at that. The bus is full. The bus is full. Strong strength play. That's been a key component of this Tunisian team. Big, strong runners that they've got. And, of course, they've got the finishers. Amani Gabi, who scored the try, was a great finisher. That's a fantastic run that we saw that built up that try. As Chaima Abi was running, got caught by the defensive cover of Uganda. And it's been a very competitive game so far, back and forth. Amani Gabi, very good player. Definitely one of the standout Bye. players of this tournament. The final play of this first half. We're all locked up at five apiece. Yesterday at about the same time, the game ended 10 apiece. Who is going to take the lead? Oh, a mistake from Tunisia. That's so important. Once you scored, spoke about it earlier in the day. Once you scored, you need to make sure that you keep your concentration levels up. Tunisia is definitely going to be disappointed by that short kick resulting in a free kick in the middle of the field for Uganda. Grace Armour with the penalty, with the tap that she took, and again spotting some space. Now they, she's managed to turn this Tunisian side behind. It's a foot race all the way to the try line, and it looks like Nabulime got there first. Did she dot it down? The referee says no. Disappointing for Nabulime. I think she thought that she scored, but the referee saying it is not a try. So at halftime, it's still five apiece. And did she manage to get her hands on the ball? A oh, great call by the referee. Referee was on point there. Fantastic call by the referee. That's a great play. Great opportunistic play by Uganda. Going into the oranges, the game is evenly tied, Johan. It's a great game of rugby that we've seen. Two very, very evenly matched teams. And this is how the first half unfolded. Tunisia asked to do a lot of defending, especially in those first three, four minutes. They were asked to make 20 tackles. Eventually, it was Uganda who managed to break through. But also the, the, the penalties against Tunisia, they're just lacking a little bit in their discipline at the moment. That's also something that the coach will address during this halftime team talk. Look at the visits to Opposition 22, Uganda going in twice, only managed to convert. And Tunisia on their sole visit to the Uganda 22, converting and getting those five points. We've definitely got a humdinger thriller on our hands. Both of these teams will be looking to go through to the next round. It's some fantastic rugby. Tunisia, Uganda, great game on our hands. We're not tearing them out, okay? Ladies, let us stick to our structure. Are we clear on that? Yes, yes. We don't have to score off the first phase, okay? Let's be patient, all right? We are still in this game, and we've got seven minutes Just a reminder, to reminder, yesterday's game between these two teams ended up even, Stephen. Are we headed for another one of those? Well, we're in the knockout stages, so we've got an extra time should that happen. These team, two teams are starting to know each other very, very well. Even in 2017, the sides met in the bronze medal match. On that occasion, Tunisia too strong, winning that one 14-5. And I'm sure Uganda will be desperate to get some revenge. Someone might say that these teams are full of beans, but you know that uh, a little bit of ginger in their coffee or their tea today might have got them going. Nabulime with the kickoff in the second half, and there's Kuluka Mir again with some strong running down that left hand side. She's so difficult to bring to ground. 
You don't want to have her get the ball too close to the try line because she will bulldoze her way over. Now it's Armani Garbi, the try scorer from the first half. Good stepping from her. She gets the play away, the ball away on the outside as well to Maria Mekni. This is a very promising start for Tunisia, but they need to make sure that they keep hold of the ball. But uh, holding on in the ground, says the referee. Can Uganda capitalize on this now? Long pass over to the veteran Charlotte Modula, stepping past a couple of defenders. Eventually, she goes down to ground. Nabulime into Nandawula. Lisa Walker also taking the ball into contact. Nabulime taking the ball out at the back. A little bit of space to work with for this Ugandan side on this left hand touch line. Grace Alma with the doing well to keep the ball in field, but now Tunisia has turned it over. Eventually it goes out into touch. And it looks like it's gonna be a Tunisian thrown at the line out. Great initial work by Tunisia. Came out in the first second half full of bins, full of ginger, ready to take it on. Unfortunately, they had a turnover there. Uganda running back at them. We have a thriller game on our hands. Mary Mekni with the throw in on the halfway line. Tunisia with the skew thrown at the line out. Also a bit of a early lifting there on the Tunisian side, but the referee awarding the free kick for Uganda. And it will be a scrum on the halfway line. With Grace Alma to feed. Yeah, but early lift there, but referee calling it not in straight. Again, a strong scrum from uh, Tunisia, but it's available for the Ugandan side. What can their backline do against a strong defensive pattern from the Tunisian team? It's a wall rounder. She gets around on the outside. It looks like Emmanuel Oroma down that right hand touch line, eventually hauled in just as she makes her way into the 22. Still available for the Ugandans, and the penalty awarded offside, says the referee. Opting to go straight down the middle. It, way it goes to Emily Lukuru. Oh, just uh, not able to get past the last defender. Now to Peace Walker and then uh, Mudula. She's got support on the outside. It's Nabulime who goes over for the second score, and it puts Uganda back in the lead. Very well worked try, moving it from one end of the field to the other. Uganda is showing a lot of patience. It came off from that line out that was skewed. Uganda getting that opportunity, passing the ball out wide just beating the defender who was coming up strong to try and get that covered defense going on. Uganda back in this game, back in the ascendancy. 10-5 Uganda with the kick to follow. Johan, it's a great game of rugby we have. And this also is such a crucial conversion attempt for the Charlotte Medulla, the captain, only survivor from the 2009 Sevens World Cup, which in which Uganda featured. Also their most experienced player in the side. And this conversion attempt, it looked good, but it hits the upright and it's also was going to be short. So the score remains Uganda 10, Tunisia 5, under three minutes left. Good hands by the back line, just keeping it simple, drawing in the defense, spreading it wide and uh, allowing the play on the outside to go over. So it's now... Nabulime with the restart and the difficult, or rather, a bit of a silly mistake there. It's the second time in this game that we've seen the team score and just uh, not getting the restart right. Restart's so crucial, so crucial. Seven minutes is such a short time. Possession is everything. Just over two minutes left for Tunisia to fight back. There it goes to Kulut Kumir. Difficult player to bring to ground. Eventually. She goes to ground inside the half of Uganda into the hands of Islam Abdallah now. Got support on the outside, nicely through the hands from Ziri to Ben Abdel Jalil. Good hands by this uh, Tunisian side. Ziri down the left hand touch line. Gets the pass away as well to Mekni. And Tunisia now into the 22 meter area of Uganda. 
Tunisia need to get support. A little bit slow to arrive. Eventually it is there. Goes to Abdallah. Nice little dummy throw. Let's RB, Gamani RB, and away to Amani. Knocks the ball backwards, so the referee happy for play to continue. And Kulut Kamir, she now needs support. Uganda over there. And I think, uh, yeah, I, I thought that penalty must come because uh, Kamir Gulut did take a long time to release that ball. Just over a minute left. But a clear indication of what the, the Tunisians can do with ball in hand. They've got some fantastic runners showing a lot of patience in that build-up. But the Ugandan defense are holding a resolute holding strong. Uganda will be counting down the seconds. 60 of them left in this second semi-final. And this could wrap up the victory if she's able to get past nice little offload on the inside but Charlotte Medulla not able to hold on and it all comes down to this final movement scrum awarded to Tunisia they've got the ability to go 50 meters of the field can they do it against this Ugandan side changes being made by the Tunisian coach. And it is, uh, does look like it is Kalut Kamir that left the field. Of course, the five points will level matters and it will take us into extra time. Penalty going the way of Tunisia, deciding to take it quickly. Can they expose Uganda on the outside? This will be a nervy few seconds for both these teams coaches it all comes down to this a dummy thrown by Diri still available for Tunisia at the back that's good support a much better play at the breakdown by this Tunisian side taking on the defense now gets the offload away Ben Abdel Jalil did well to hold on to that ball penalty advantage is there for Tunisia now it's Sharada gets the pass away to Diri Diri stepping away past a couple of defenders Knocked backwards by Uganda. The referee saying advantage was over. And absolute delight for the Ugandan team. You can see the disappointment on the Tunisian side. And look how delighted they are. They know that they have an opportunity to play for the trophy. They enter the final. And very different scenes on the Tunisian bench. Very emotive, uh, lots of passion. Indication of how important it is for these ladies. They've been playing rugby the last two days. Very, very happy with this opportunity. And it's a great game of rugby that we've witnessed. Previously, these teams met each other, and it was 10 all. And we just had a fantastic game of rugby on our hands. Uganda win. Kulud Kumir, one of their key players, very, very upset that she will not be in the final, but they still have the opportunity to play for the bronze medal match, but Uganda absolutely delighted that they will be in there. And that's disappointing. You've got one big tournament in a year. You work for months and months preparing for this event, and at the last, or the second last hurdle, you just fall short. Nothing to be ashamed about. It has been a fantastic performance by Tunisia. Very hard game. The Ugandans happy. Looks like we're going to have an East African final here on our hands, Jan. Yeah, two big rivals, Uganda and Kenya. Their men's 15th team were in action last weekend. But that is how the second semi-final ends. It's Uganda victorious against Tunisia. The full-time score, Uganda 10, Tunisia 5. Clear indication of a lot of work that was done in that game. Tackles made, 26-21. When you look at uh, the turnovers, one, Tunisia just had the one turnover there. This is an opposition 22, that's two all. Ooh, this is an evenly balanced game and just hinged on a couple of mistakes that were made. But a very good game of rugby there between Tunisia and Uganda. Uganda going through to that final against Kenya, an all East African final. If this was in the 15th game, it would be an Elgin Cup game. We're gonna head down to Ziklo. She's standing by with the victorious Ugandan coach. Thanks guys.
guys, I'm with uh, the Uganda coach, Helen Butume. Now, Helen, how crucial was this tournament for Uganda? Um, okay, we're, uh, we're a young team. We started rebuilding in 2016. I've got um, very young players. Um, only about three of them have um, experience of more than five years. So um, the target today was to get to the final. And I'm so happy that we've achieved it. Only two players have ever played in a final before. So this is like, it's been really big and something the girls have worked hard towards. So I'm happy that they were able to put yesterday's loss behind them and stick to our structures and then come out with a win. It was a very tough game, but I'm so proud of them. Great job. Now you've made it to the finals. What's your game plan? Um, we now have to reset. Kenya is a very strong team, very, very experienced. So we have to focus on being disciplined, sticking to the structures and giving it all that we have. Sevens is a tricky game, you know. We can actually win this game if we put the effort into it. If we don't, it will take nothing away from my players. But we are not going to walk into this game believing that we are going to lose. We are going to walk in fighting for a win and fighting right down to the last minute. Helen, I love your confidence. All the best in the finals. Thank you. Uganda believe they can go all the way and win this Rugby Africa Women's Sevens. They will be up against Kenya in the final. And those are the two teams that have progressed in the way that they progressed. Kenya victorious over Madagascar. It will be Kenya a little bit fresher than the Ugandan side in that final. And of course playing for the fifth place, it will be Zimbabwe who take on Senegal after their two victories earlier today. This is still what is lying in store on day two of the Rugby Africa Women's Sevens. Zambia will be coming up against Botswana, but most importantly, that final Kenya versus Uganda, that is what it's all about. Make sure you don't go anywhere. Join us again at quarter to two Central African time as day two of the Rugby Africa Women's Sevens continues live on Quesa Sports. Five games left, five opportunities for some of these teams to make history. And in particular in the final, it will be Kenya versus Uganda. An opportunity for one of those two teams to lift the 2018 Africa Women's Sevens Trophy. Welcome back to the Botswana National Stadium in Khabarone. Still an absolutely magnificent day here in Botswana. The rugby has been really, really good. The weather has played along extremely nicely. And we are now into the business end of the competition. Five matches remaining and very, very important matches for all these teams. In particular, as I mentioned, that final that will be in action later on today. Up next, it will be Botswana coming up against Zambia. The host nation has been very, very impressive in this uh, tournament so far. And this is what we've seen so far on day two. Zambia just narrowly losing out against Zimbabwe. And that was uh, earlier in the day. Senegal also getting the upper hand over Botswana. Kenya too good for Madagascar. And then a little bit of a surprise in that second semi-final. Uganda knocking out Tunisia to progress to the final.
And this is what is lying in store. The host nation with an opportunity to finish seventh in this tournament. That'll be a great result for them considering that they've just returned to this competition. They will be up against Zambia. Zimbabwe will be up against Senegal. Mauritius and Morocco, plenty of them to play for. The team that finishes bottom will be relegated and won't be in action in the next competition next year. And then, of course, all the attention on that final, Kenya versus Uganda. Liam, the rugby has been sensational today, but uh, at the end of the day, these last five games, this is where it really counts. Well, it's all playoff rugby, and uh, the pressure will be on these teams to try and finish as strongly as they can. And the final between Kenya and Uganda, that East African affair, will be a cracker to watch. Also great to see all the youngsters exposed to the game of rugby, that they can witness their heroes live in action and also dream about playing for their country one day. It really is something for everybody, old and young, everybody that's made their way to the Botswana National Stadium has been very much entertained because the rugby has been of a very, very high standard. And it really has been a wonderful two days of rugby. Hopefully not the last time that Botswana will host one of these Rugby Africa events because it has been a really, really great tournament. Liam, this is the age that you want to introduce the youngsters to rugby, get them while they're young, teach them the skills. And uh, by the time they get to you coaching a national side, it just makes it that much easier. It certainly does. And rugby is a late specialization sport, so you need a lot of time learning the skills um, before you can progress to the international level. And uh, these kind of tournaments just get those young people interested in the game. It is a spectacle. And we've seen some great skills and some great games this weekend. Everybody has been entertained and uh, the big reason for that is that Botswana have been surprising as some of these teams in the competition and another opportunity for them to cause an upset as they come up against Zambia. These two teams did meet yesterday almost uh, at about the same time as today. On that occasion they finished five apiece so who will end victorious here as Zambia come up against Botswana? Botswana with the home ground advantage. And Liam, you know all about how important that is, especially when it comes to a knockout game. It is. This uh, Botswana team have really got the crowd on their feet because they have played some good rugby. They've been well organized, a lot of energy, and every time they've scored a try, the crowd's got behind them. So they'll want to finish strongly in this game. So it will be Botswana playing in the light blue kits with the red numbers on their back. And they will be playing right to left first up and Zambia in the away kits in the, the white and blue playing from left to right. As we look at this Zambian side, we spoke about them earlier today, Rebecca Piri and Mary Piri. A lot of the play revolves around them. And in the number nine jersey, look out for Mary Liamba. She really is one of those players that every time she gets the ball, you think something magical is going to happen. For Botswana as well, a couple of standout players in their side, Emily Ritter. A lot of the play has resolved, uh, revolved around them. And uh, Bianca Zoli also making an impact when she comes off the bench. So it is Botswana that gets us underway and uh, Zambia allowing the ball to bounce and it goes out into touch. It will be a early line out throw in for Zambia. Very skewed throw in there for Zambia early on, and that's just simply handing possession back to the uh, Botswana side. You can't afford to be making those type of mistakes early in this game. The referee awarding a scrum. And those are the basics that you need to get right, in the, especially in the early parts of the game. Absolutely. Botswana's scrum was really under pressure in their last game against Senegal, so hopefully they've addressed that and they can take some clean possession from this set piece. But they, they do come away with it, but they are pushed backwards. Uh, Tata, Tata Tatuana down the right hand side managing to get away from the defenders now that she needs support Prudence Ramukapane running forward to pick up the ball there the referee awarding the penalty 
It's still in favor of Botswana, and you can hear how excited the crowd is getting every time Botswana look like they are going to do something. Penalty is still there for Botswana. The Zambia player is not rolling away. Bahwasi taking it quickly. Bahwasi close to the line. Nobody's going to stop her in that position. And it is the hosts who go over for the first points. Simple try from Botswana. Picked up two penalties. Got it five meters from the line. And no one was going to stop that carrier so close. Zambia didn't come off the line. So when the tap was there, Zambia didn't move forward. You can see there that uh, the Botswana player, Bahwasi, was... He, was able to cross the line without any sort of uh, defense coming from that Zambia team so they come back for the kickoff and uh, Botswana goes 7-0 ahead yeah and that conversion was good as well that could be crucial come the final few seconds of this game so it's now Omukhiling Rabatene to get us back underway this kick uh, wasn't going to go the 10 meters but it's, it doesn't matter because Zambia opting to play the ball losing the ball in the contact there so another opportunity for Botswana just needing a few players Available down this left-hand side. Good work at the breakdown by Zambia, but the referee saying that uh, the tackler not rolling away. So taken quickly by Rebatene. Breaking down through the middle. Bahwasi down that right-hand touchline. Good platform now for Botswana. Sizing up our options is Habiba de Tupa, but now stolen by the Zambian side into the hands of Priska Samutela. It goes, she's not able to hold on to it, but the referee says there was obstruction. So it's still a penalty for the Botswana side. They really have started this game extremely well. Into the hands of Rebecca Piri, it goes. She takes play into the 22 meter area of Zambia. Now Mary Piri, out it goes to Muami. Or rather, it's Ramakapane, and Ramakapane shows it, throws it wide into the hands of uh, Dutupa down that right hand touchline. Forcing Botswana to turn around. A little bit messy there in the end, and the end result is that it will be a line out on the far side of the field. Scrappy couple of minutes from both sides there. A lot of toing and froing of possession. Uh, Botswana picking up a couple of penalties against themselves, something they may want to address at half time. Uh, but possession now for Botswana, and they've really got to control it, just get some phases, get some momentum, and uh, try and find the try line and get some score on the board. Mokhaleng Rebatene will be throwing this ball in at the line out. Tato Tutuane to receive. And it's stolen by the Zambian side. The referee bringing play back. Uh, not quite sure what the reason for that is, but there was an infringement at the line out. So it's a free kick for this Botswana side. Oh, and this is a good run for Botswana down this left hand touch line. Lebohang Kelepile, she's got a lot of speed. And she goes over the referee, happy that she dotted it down as well. And Botswana are off to a flyer in this game. They lead 12-0 with two minutes left in the first half. The infringements from, Zamb from Zambia really causing them some problems. This is an outstanding carry down the short side. A lot of pace from Kelepile and uh, gets her over the try line. Just able to ground it. Good cover, cover defense from the Zambian team. But these two tries that Botswana have scored have come from one from a penalty, one from a free kick. So Zambia's infringements around the lineout and around the breakdown are causing them these two tries that have come in. Very different start this was from Zambia compared to the earlier game against Zimbabwe. They started that one really well. And at the moment, just uh, don't look like they're able to do anything even when they do have ball in hand. Taken into contact by Yvonne Malenga. Tuckler not releasing, says the referee. So it's Malenga again, he takes it quickly. Throws it wide to Rebecca Piri. 
Good run by Priska Samutela. Priska Samutela now has got a lot of speed and all of a sudden Zambia bounce back. Zambia showing the quality of their attack when they can get it going. They haven't long had a lot of possession in this first six and a half minutes of this game, but there they showed the quality. There was an in out swerve from the Zambian player just to put Samutela away. You just see here, she's got a lot of pace, very powerful player. Goes that in to out, creates the arcing run, and just on the outside of the Botswana players. A good try from Zambia. Mary Liamba with the conversion attempt that's going to land well short. So the score remains Zambia 5, Botswana 12. And we will just have time for the restart. And we saw a couple of times earlier in this tournament when Zambia... Well, in fact, the referee that says that is enough. So the referee happy to go into the halftime break. But I was just about to say that Zambia need to make sure that after they scored, they keep their... Con Concentration levels up. So confirmation there of the halftime scores, but Swana in the lead 12-5 against Zambia. But uh, Zambia still very much in it, especially the way that they ended that first half. I really feel going into this next seven minutes that fatigue is going to play a part for both of these teams and they're going to have to use their bench as well. Get their substitutions on at the right time. You can just see some heavy legs there going into day two. stats there uh, pretty even on the tackles made even again on tackles missed so pretty even contest as you'd see from the uh, scoreline but just look at Zambia's penalties conceded five against them none against Botswana and two of those penalties are where Botswana scored their tries so you expect that they'll be addressing that at halftime and just improving their their uh, discipline around the breakdown in the set piece take it wider because we are faster than them again let's take it wider however we can only do that if we pass the ball wider all right it doesn't really matter, matter what happens in the rest of this game the Botswana coaching staff can be very very pleased with what they've achieved in this tournament so far and the players really deserving all the credit that they're getting and it's great to see so many supporters coming out to to witness so zambian kickoff yeah they are trailing by seven points so they've got to be thinking about trying to get this position back either from the kick or from pressure from their defense and let's see how that goes Mary Liamba deciding to go with the long kickoff. Botswana opting to run the ball out of their own 22. It's something that they've done very well, keeping ball in hand as they work their way into the opposition's territory. Loxwa with a long pass over into the hands of Bakwasi, try scorer from that first half for Botswana. Penalty going against Zambia. The Tupa taking it quickly, catching the defense, napping. She manages to get around on the outside. Good offload as well to Rebatene. And that's good work at the breakdown for Botswana as they protect that ball. Now opting to go straight through the middle, needing to find supports. So it's uh, perhaps she should have just held on a little bit longer. Picked up now by Rebatene. And that's a strong tackle coming from Natasha Katambo driving Ribatene back. So it's available for Botswana. It's a, been a minute of them just controlling play, keeping ball in hand. Just need to make sure that they continue doing that, then they will end victorious in this game. But they can't afford to give Zambia opportunities like that. Picked up at the back there by Samutela. Good offload. Oh, the referee saying it was a forward pass. 
So it does uh, give Botswana a bit of a lifeline there. Zambra really hustling in defense, coming forward, putting the Botswana players under pressure. And just that drift defense that we saw there, a great cover tackle from Zambia, forced a turnover. But unfortunately, on the counter attack, they made a slightly forward pass. And the ball's back in the Botswana's hands, and a chance for them to uh, right off the just off the 22 to try and enforce some pressure on this Botswana on the Zambian defense. Penalty going the way of Botswana, so it's to Twana to take it, gets it away to Bahwasi, looking for a second try of this game, almost. Got her hands through to make the offload, but just not able to control it. Otherwise, it would have been a third score for Botswana. Very close to scoring there, Botswana. And uh, unfortunately, just couldn't get over the line. They were, they were driving their legs really well, but they've put Zambia in this corner here, the scrum. And uh, if they can apply some pressure, they could get possession back pretty quickly. Mary Liamba, the player to pick it up out of the back of the scrum. I said before the time, every time she gets the ball, she's exciting and she can do something. And uh, she's uh, created another great movement here for Zambia. It will be a race all the way to the try line. It's Priska Samutela. She, oh, she's going to be stopped just short. She was tackled. She didn't let the ball go. And the referee picking up on that, holding on. Not sure if she was holding the tackle, but it's not going to matter because the penalty has been awarded. And Botswana now go on the counter-attack down this right-hand touchline. Good speed being shown by Detupa. She's got support on the inside. She manages to get the offload away to Bahwasi, and it will be a second try for her, this third try for Botswana. And this will open up a nice, healthy gap for Botswana. Isn't that the beauty of the sevens game? break away from Zambia from the scrum that they had five meters from their try line and a fantastic carry right until one meter from the line which was then penalized by the referee for uh, not releasing the ball and then Botswana go 80 meters back to score by Bakwasi I think has been really good in this game she's a very effective player that support play that she's put in there is a real lung busting run unfortunately can't convert that but Botswana starting to pull away from Zambia here 17 5 up two and a half minutes to play 12 points the lead for the host nation and Zambia the last time they were in the tournament was 2015 finished 10th there they won't finish 10th here but they would have been looking for at least a, a seventh position finish but it's all going the way of Botswana at the moment but still, two and a half minutes is a long time in a game of sevens rugby. And Zambia trying to go back on the counter-attack now. Yvonne Malenga with a nice little run into the half of the Botswana side. Kosonka not able to hold on. And the referee picking up on that. It will be a scrum for Botswana. And they will just be looking to run down the next two minutes. Absolutely, they put in the scrum, although their scrum has been under pressure uh, in the last two games. They just need to anchor down, get quite low, strike the ball and get it into their back's hands and just work their way back up the field. If they can control possession for at least a minute now, they could secure this game. Put under pressure at scrum time, but it's Rabatene who ends up with the ball in hand. She got it away to Tetuane. Strong tackle coming from uh, Reni Suzy Walima. There's a deep time try scorer, Bahwasi. Nice little use of the width of the field, getting the ball out to the wing. And this will be a yellow card for Veronica Lungu. So it is um, Zambia that will finish this game with only the six players. And surely it's Botswana that will just go out to secure victory here. Perhaps give this crowd, this crowd something else to celebrate. This could be a second yellow for Zambia. That they are definitely not back 10 meters. And 
it uh, now will be Zambia finishing this game with only the five players on the field. Zambia's discipline just costing them this last couple of minutes. They're down to five players. It's an opportunity for Botswana just to seal the win, although there's not much time to play. Only 15 seconds, but a try here concludes the game for Botswana. It looks like they'll cross it out, unfortunately. Couldn't hold on to the ball. And uh, Botswana will get, sorry, Zambia will get the last possession of the game. There goes the Hooter. This will be the final play. Zambia need to go 95 meters if they want to finish this game by scoring a try, but uh, they only have the two players in their back line at the moment, the two players in the Sinbin. Mary Liamba, only option really is to boot the ball downfield, but all this does it, is it hands possession back to Botswana. Now they've got plenty of space down that left-hand side to work with. Kelepile not able to get past the defenders on the outside. Back it goes to, to Twane. And the penalty going the way of Zambia. Good signs here by Zambia. They don't mind uh, still playing, even though they only have the five players on the field. Kasunka to Liamba. Margaret Kasunka again taking the ball into contact. Out it comes to Mary Liamba. You have to feel for this Zambian side. They don't have too many options with only the five players. And perhaps now it will be Botswana to... Well, Botswana seem happy to finish this game. But of course, uh, with the new laws, when you kick the ball out after the hooter, you must play the line out. So stall play continues. So the right thinking there from Botswana just to end the game. This is a playoff game, so there's no value in, in uh, score differences. But you just need to tap the ball off her foot and then kick it out. And that would have concluded the game. They've got to take the line out. I don't think that if Zambia win the ball, it's obviously not going to make any difference to the result. So uh, but credit to these players just for playing right to the end. We're well over the, the hooter mark at the moment. Uh, look at what it means to this Botswana side. Absolutely delighted at their efforts in this two-day tournament. They were playing at home and they gave their fans a lot to be excited about. Women's rugby in Botswana definitely is growing very, very nicely. The full-time score in this encounter to Botswana that will finish in seventh place as they beat Zambia 17-5. Botswana can be very proud of that finish. New to, to women's sevens, and they've looked really organized in the tournament. A lot of energy, a lot of commitment, got the crowd on their feet, and uh, a very good finish, and a very good sign for women's sevens in Africa. Just these stats, uh, 23 tackles from Zambia to the 17 of Botswana. And uh, not much in the tackles there, but we've got to look at the penalties. Ten penalties against Zambia to the two of Botswana. And I, I think it's uh, very definite that we can say that that's been the difference between the two teams. So it's delight for Botswana as they finish their tournament on a winning note. So make sure that you don't go anywhere. Still plenty of rugby heading your way. But first, a few photo opportunities for this Botswana side as they remain delighted with their efforts on day two of the Rugby Africa Women's Sevens. Uh, Zimbabwe versus Senegal here in Khabarone, Botswana as we continue our epic two days of Africa women's sevens here in the capital. It's all getting towards the business end as we culminate into arguably the best teams on show 
There is uh, still obviously the big final to come. Those of you that aren't aware, Kenya will take on Uganda in an all East Africa affair. So Zimbabwe versus Senegal is going to be a tough test for the Zimbabweans. The Senegalese side are extremely physical, and there's some great players in this lineup to look out for. But uh, first of all, Zimbabwe, Precious Marange, they've uh, relied on her a lot. Uh, and Peace Satoli, she's a little bit young, but she'll get a little bit of uh, exposure uh, over these two days. You can look out for Fatoumata Ba, the captain of Senegal. She really controls this Senegalese side, and uh, she's got some real skill. But uh, it's got to be said, Liam, it's going to be a tough job for Zimbabwe. Certainly is, and these two teams will go head to head with both quite physical, but Senegal, you know, in the last game were very physical. Uh, Kickoff long from Zimbabwe, and uh, early possession for Senegal. So a chance for Zimbabwe to stamp a bit of authority nice and early. Wayward pass. No harm done, but uh, they'll have to regroup. And there's a little bit of a show of how these Senegalese are going to treat the Zimbabweans. That ball is not going anywhere. And guess what? Turnover Senegal. Guess who's right in the middle there, Liam? Yeah, Fatoumata Ba, very physical player. But you just see that green line of defense hunting like a pack, very aggressive coming forward. And Zimbabwe, no momentum in the carry, are gonna get held up, and that just gives possession back to Senegal. Well, early signs here. Zimbabwe had an opportunity into the 22. They now find themselves halfway between the halfway line and that 22. And the question is, they've tried to take them on physically, even though it's only one attempt, that didn't work. The question is, where can Zimbabwe break down the Senegalese side? Well, they can start with a great scrum. It might need to be quick ball for Zimbabwe. Maybe try and catch Senegal on the hop. Through the hands, what a great line from Moko Monda straightens nicely and Zimbabwe find themselves uh, 10 meters short. The referee is going to hand that over to Senegal so a great opportunity for the Zimbabweans going amiss. Absolutely and doing the right thing there from Zimbabwe moving the ball a couple of passes away from the contact area and then a strong straightening line from Mukamunda. Fortunately just lost her uh, support line a little bit. The supporters are 10 to 15 meters behind her and that created the error at the ruck. But ball here for Senegal. Zimbabwe need to pressure hard in defense and try and keep Senegal here on the halfway on the uh, try line. Oh, little dummy from the captain and uh, drives the bus straight into the Zimbabwe captain. We know who won that uh, competition. And now a chance for them to clear their lines. They take play up to the 22. No real progress for the Senegalese. Now, a little bit of momentum. They got the numbers on the far side, do Senegal. And there's the captain. The Zimbabwe captain is up for the challenge. And that's good defense from Zimbabwe. But they keep going, do Senegal. Let's play now over the halfway line. Into the Zimbabwe half. And referee is going to award a penalty to the Senegalese. you think that but didn't want to say it that forward pass certainly is and you just see Fatoumata but bar there she's in the middle of everything that's good about the Senegalese team and uh, very physical carry she's standing a playmaker at the moment and a last scrum Zimbabwe were the the winners of that contest they've got the ball in 
they've got the put in here. A little bit of a problem with these scrums. They haven't uh, been very good. So a reset scrum. And there's a little mistake from Zimbabwe. They can ill afford that. It'll be scrum down Senegal ball. And uh, just an unforced error from Mokome at the back of the scrum. It would have been the pressure from the Senegalese scrum half. But uh, they just need some clean ball. Do Zimbabwe if they've got any chance in this game. It's been a very scrappy five minutes. Both teams trying really hard to uh, get on top of their opposition. But creating a lot of errors. Senegal do get this ball cleanly from the scrum. Well, here's a chance for Senegal. Great offload, but there's the unforced error again, the knock on. And uh, as Liam said, a very scrappy first five minutes. No doubt some weary legs, and uh, that causes all sorts of troubles. There's the coaching staff of Zimbabwe, Abigail Kawanza. There's the coach on the right of your picture intensively just watching on her charges as they uh, will hopefully pick up something here to end off if they did win this game Liam in their eyes probably a reasonably successful tournament I think it would be but they got uh, eight minutes to play in this and haven't really started well but no, neither has either side started well this is their chance speculative kick downfield yeah they needed to run away oh that's way forward so another mistake from Senegal and uh, not quite the team that we've seen over the last uh, couple of days, is it? Very scrappy few minutes. A lot of scrums in this first six and a half minutes. And uh, we just want to see Zimbabwe get some clean ball, keep possession, work their way up the field, get some momentum, and try and get the first score on the board. They've got the possession. It's a potentially 30 seconds to play. Uh, even though Zimbabwe have held on to possession, they haven't really gone anywhere apart from sideways, but at least they've held on to possession. That should be offsides. But uh, referee says play on, and uh, good aggression from uh, Zimbabwe there's a nice little run the support is there Zimbabwe is going to come in and score the first try of this tournament or rather of this game and it's going to be Faith Mungira who will get over for Zimbabwe and you would have thought that would have brought a smile to Abigail Kawanza's face it hasn't but they should be very happy with that was excellent decision making from this Zimbabwe team they could have come to the open side where there was some space but they just noticed Senegal's defense on the short side was really narrow and just allowed the player to get on the outside carries the ball in the outside hand so just flicked away the tackle grab tackle that was going to come onto the shirt goes under the poles which is pretty important and uh, conversion to come on the hooter breaks the deadlock 7-0 up Zimbabwe and uh, a toughly contested, very scrappy first half. You can tell by the uh, body counts now as we get towards the end of the tournament. Our try scorer, Faith Mongera, being carried off. But uh, nevertheless, they have a seven point lead going into half time. Zimbabwe leads Senegal 7 0. And uh, maybe a little bit of uncharted territory here for Zimbabwe. But wow, what a result in that first half. We'll be talking there just about keeping the ball. You see Abigail Kawanza talking to her troops. And uh, it's all about basics because the first half has been very scrappy. Here we see uh, the stats. Eight tackles made for Zimbabwe. Nine to Senegal. Not much difference there. Not much difference in tackles missed. So a closely contested game. Uh, kicks for hand. One speculative kick from Zimbabwe. They were lucky not to have a counter-attack against them. Uh, but two visits to the opposition, 22, one try. Not a bad outcome from there. Four handling errors from Senegal. Something that they'll want to think about being much more accurate in because that has made this first half quite scrappy. Well, every chance for any team to win it from here 
But uh, so far, you'd like to think those seven points at Zimbabwe have golden. Someone's going to have to dig deep, and no doubt that's the chat from the two coaches. But, uh, between these two teams, you've got seven minutes of rugby left, and the weekend is over. Let's try and make sure that we're the ones celebrating our hard efforts over those last seven minutes. That lady in picture, I do believe, still has something to say in this encounter, the captain of Senegal. Nice, strong carry from Zimbabwe. Support play is good. They just need to be a little bit more clinical. Good appreciation of the laws from the Zimbabweans as well, going to the deck. Again, a chance. And if someone can get the energy to run as far as they can, it's going to drain the energy of the defenders as well. So that's going to be critical. Who is going to go the full distance of the seven minutes? Because one little mistake here. There's a couple of slip tackles. Has she got the pace? I think so. This could be the second try for Zimbabwe, and it's going to be Caroline Malenga who's going to get in for Zimbabwe for the second try. Well, Caroline Malenga's scored a couple of those this weekend, just that breakaway try. You saw her come off her outside foot, stepped, attacked the inside shoulder of that drifting Senegalese defence and just went the 40 metres. Very powerful athlete, great pace that she showed. Senegal's defense all over the place in ones and twos not quite cohesive and it just opened that gap up for Malenga and uh, a try just after half time is just what Abigail Kwanza would have asked for conversion critical for Zimbabwe two converted tries here puts them in the pound seats and uh, the captain obliges so uh, they have a two converted try cushion as we have a look at that try again we spoke about the energy level. Someone needed to break a tackle, and Caroline Malenga was the one that put her hand up. Two very fatigued teams out there, and you just need that player like Malenga just to break the line and go 40 meters for you, just to give you that cushion in the game. There's the unforced error. So it's all going Zimbabwe's way at this stage. They need that to continue a little bit longer. And if you have a look at the two teams there in perspective, slightly more jump in the step of the Zimbabweans. A 14-point lead just gives you that opportunity to push Senegal into the corners. If they are going to score, push them into the corners, make their conversions difficult to, to get. And 14 points is a nice lead. Well binding call from the referee illegal binding so he has a chance now for Senegal straight up the middle we mentioned that they're a physical side and they'll have some strong runners and Zimbabwe just need to be patient try and eat up as much as that clock as they can There's a loose ball. A really good work from Zimbabwe. And finally, Senegal find a little bit of space, but up until then, oh, it is uh, a huge hit from the Senegalese. Still going, and Zimbabwe still putting their bodies on the line. Someone needs to get a foot in touch. This is energy sapping stuff. Senegal in all that time, still not even reaching the 22 of Zimbabwe. Great hands from uh, their number 10, Mariama Barry. But they continue now to the far side. There are some tired bodies out on the field, the National Sports Stadium here in Gaborone. Good hands again. They still go Senegal. And there's the rip. There's the little knock on. And uh, they should just play the advantage and let the whistle go and give everyone a chance to breathe again. Oh, great little step. And it's the support play. And he's not there. And play on, says the ref. Now the captain, ball in hand.
Zimbabwe probably playing the best sevens we've seen from them this weekend, full of energy in defense and just scrambling to make tackles, grabbing shirts, grabbing knees, just doing everything they can to hold the Senegalese team out. They get this penalty, chance just to catch the breath in the lungs and uh, they're ready to go again. Here's the try scorer. She's found the space again. She's had to put in a couple of those runs. She's got some support with her. She needs to look for that. No, she's going to go all the way herself. And I'd like to think that that is going to finish Senegal off. I can't see them coming back from this. Caroline Malenga has done it again. Off the left, off the right, finds the space, runs three quarters of the distance of the field, under the posts, and could just have won this game for Zimbabwe. She's been the game changer for the Zimbabwe team. Two fantastic tries, 40 to 50 meters out. She does break tackles, but when she does that, she's got the pace to go all the way. She's been the game changer in this second half for Zimbabwe. Zimbabwe did weather a very big offensive from Senegal in those last minute, and we're just able to scramble, get the ball back, and that got the uh, possession, which allowed Malenga to go the whole way. As you said, Dirk, I think with this conversion, whether it goes over or not, could be the death blow for Senegal in this game. Well, also some fresh legs needed for both teams. Makumonde comes off for Majaya, but have a look at that again. Just a little sip, subtle, and uh, you thought that she was going to be chased down, but uh, she was determined. You can see it on her face. No one was going to stop her. And uh, Caroline Malenga picks up a double and two great tries in the second half that I do believe will bury Senegal. <laughs> Senegal still going. Referee says that's gone backwards. But uh, it's some serious commitment from the Zimbabweans. There's the Huta. So this is going to be a victory for Zimbabwe, regardless of the outcome of what will probably be the last move. And they're not giving up. They're still going. And putting in the big hits. There's a little bit of space, and they are going to get away. So Saar, well, you thought she was going to have the last say. Great work from Zimbabwe. A referee is going to give a penalty for not letting go. And what commitment from the Zimbabweans had written off the last say to Senegal. What great work in defense. Great eff effort from Zimbabwe at the end there. Just scrambling to stop those ad attackers right on the line. Two tackles just to stop uh, Senegal. But looks like the referee has awarded the try. And uh, consolation very much so for the Senegalese team as they bow out to Zimbabwe. Very toughly contested first half, very scrappy, not much in it, but uh, second half, Caroline Molenga, the game changer for Zimbabwe, two 40 and 50 meter tries from her makes the difference. And Zimbabwe have improved as they've gone through the tournament. Here you see the late tackle from Zimbabwe, two good tackles. Questionable whether she was held and had to release the ball, but uh, referee awards a try and both teams bow out of this tournament. Well, there's your confirmation. Regardless of the outcome of that last move, Zimbabwe win in the end comfortably. 21 points to five over Senegal. What a great uh, comeback from them. You hadn't given them a chance. But uh, they can take the credit. They put in the tackles. Have a look at that. Yes, both teams missed, but it's that time of the day. But Zimbabwe, four visits to the Senegalese 22 and came back with three converted tries. Handling errors for Senegal, poor. And that probably cost them in that first half. They had some opportunities, but uh, it wasn't to be a great result for the Zimbabweans. They'll take uh, a lot of heart from that result against Senegal. They win 21 points to five. So that's our next game. It is Mauritius up against Morocco. We've seen this before. And uh, Mauritius, we've spoken about them being new to Sevens rugby circuit here and especially in Africa. And a chance for them to uh, just finish on a high. 
as this will be their last game here in Botswana. Actually, both teams are up a, a much more experienced Moroccan side that they'll take on in this game. And what will test Mauritius is their resolve as uh, they've played quite a bit of rugby over the last two days. The muscles will be sore, they'll be stiff, and uh, it's going to be a tough 14 minutes for both teams. This is a case of Groundhog Day. Especially look out for Rachel Adam there. The Mauritius had a fine run in the previous game. Anneli Ritter as well, definitely one to look out for. And Stephanie Domange, one of the good players there. Mauritius and Morocco having met, this will be the third time they're meeting, having met earlier on in today. And uh, we have a look there at the Morocco squad. Definitely picking up number four, Zine Talib. Zine Talib, an outstanding player today and has performed well. And Wanhiba, Wanhiba Ben Halia, number nine, a strong, strong runner. Well, we look forward to another great encounter because these players or these two teams have played against each other. What a great hit. So, not uh, giving up here, Mauritius, as uh, Sassine Lagesse puts in a massive hit. Lots of pressure. We spoke about Mauritius's uh, press defense and uh, the start of this game, they are chucking in the big hits against Morocco. And uh, it has been rewarded with a turnover ball just short of the Moroccan 22. So through the hands for Mauritius. Now numbers on the outside. Straightening the line, but unable to offload. So now 10 meters short, Mauritius. Still a chance. Maybe just guilty of uh, some lateral running there by the Islanders. Now five meters short. Still possession. They need quicker ball in this. Nice and patient from uh, Mauritius. They've committed a lot of their players to that uh, ruck. And looks like it's a turnover ball stolen by uh, Morocco. And uh, the question is, look like you're shaping to kick. And a great carry up to the 22 now. So it's sapping stuff here, both these women's sides. And there's a little bit of space. Could turn out a 14-point swing in favor of Morocco. Mauritius were really pressing, trying to score and uh, they've gone the full distance to get under the posts themselves and score the first try in this game very well worked try lots of patience sucked in there by the moroccan side very strong running step and go looking for the support Ooh. did after that a result we see the big strong runner Ben Haya. We picked her out in the previous game. Wahibo Ben Haya, strong runner. Constantly looking to see if there's any supporting player or anyone coming in for the cover defense and opening the account for Morocco there. The conversion is good. It's a seven Morocco Mauritius nil. Well, they'll be bitterly disappointed, Will Mauritius. It looked like it had try Mauritius written all over it and uh, Morocco nice and patient good defense and find themselves seven points in the lead early on in uh, the first half referee from Zimbabwe precious Bazani not happy with the breakdown there giving a penalty there to Morocco Now another chance. Gisland will get in for the second try. So Mauritius, who'd started off the first half in control, have now conceded two tries in a very short space of time. This time it's number 11, Gisland, who gets over for the try. And, uh, just stripping the defender on the outside and an easy run in untouched.
That kick is not good. Morocco 12. Mauritius nil after four minutes played. That's El Gahalazi Gizlan. Seen her pace today. Strong runner for Morocco. And there, dotting down the try. Second point for Morocco. Now, sometimes those are awarded as penalties. Just finding themselves on the wrong side. So, uh, an unforced error from uh, Francine Ichiju and uh, bringing on, <laughs> bringing about a knock on. This is a hard one for, for both Morocco and uh, Mauritius having played each other twice before once today and yesterday to, 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 to get it up for this game the opportunities facing them the chances to play a good game of rugby and having not having played each other previously today it's a, it's a big thing to build up to on the attack again Morocco and uh Another chance. That one's gone forward, so this one won't be awarded. But it was uh, Ben Yahai who, again, was the one heading to the try line, and maybe just guilty of uh, not holding on to the ball and uh, resetting. And uh, Mauritius dodging a bullet on that occasion. We've seen that you know, a few times today. The decision making not being 100%. Sometimes hang on to the ball, but looking for the offload is also a crucial aspect of sevens. So we can't be overly critical. Now, can Mauritius pull something back? Because uh, they've definitely been under pressure in the last couple of minutes, and it's been all Morocco. There is a chance that they can come back here. And their little playmaker, number five, Ruta, takes the ball into contact. They need some support, though. Mauritius still going. Halfway between the halfway line and the 22 now, Mauritius. They are on the front foot. Someone's going to have to find that space. Nice little offload. So still going, Mauritius. Here's the support. The referee uh, says offsides. It looks like there might be a card. I'm not so sure what this is for. Well, referee patients was only calling the player in, giving the dismissal to El Gaharazi Gizlan. We saw Gizlan scored the try earlier on one of the hard runners. Spending two minutes in the Sinbin in sevens, the yellow card is two minutes. Oh, well, he's going to run it out. So, and a little bit of pressure now, Morocco. There was a touch there from Mauritius, so advantage. Here's the Hooter. And there's the kick, charged down. Play on, says the referee. And uh, it's now who can run the fastest. And I can guarantee you, it's not the Mauritians. And they're going to get in for their second. That was a playing foot race. And uh, Chaima Aitalahubi coming through with a try there under the post. Morocco down to six ladies, but that kick and rush, kicking going. Turk, she should play for Liverpool. I think she's playing better than they played last night. Well, she also caught the ball, so maybe she could be goalkeeper. Well, well. The uh, Moroccans definitely in control of this game. It's 19 points to nil in favor of uh, the North Africans. The Islanders under pressure here at half time in Gaborone. Morocco definitely coming out strong. Yesterday in that game, we saw Morocco playing a against Mauritius and Morocco winning that game 24-5. Let's look at some of the key statistics and the, the matches around. Looking at tackles made 12-8. Morocco having made 12 tackles. Both teams looking at uh, forcing the opposition to get those tackles done. Missed tackles, we look at two by Mauritius uh, giving Morocco the opportunity to come in and score those tries. But this is to opposite, opposite, opposition 22 is very telling that 
with Morocco going four times into the opposition 22 and converting all their opportunities. Mauritius got lots of work to do. The Moroccan coach, I'm sure, no doubt, he'll be very happy with the performance of his side. They were being dominant in this half, had a good win against, Mor against Mauritius yesterday and a good win earlier on today. It's a lovely sunny day out here in Habaron, Botswana. Been a great day of rugby. We've had two days of rugby here in the Rugby Africa or Women's Sevens. Remember that the winners of this tournament will be going through as Africa's qualifiers for the Olympic Games. So, seven minutes left for these two teams. It's uh, all Morocco at the moment, and it just looks that Mauritius a little bit deflated. <laughs> nice early try would really give Mauritius an opportunity to get him back in this game. So possession is good. But uh, they need to get over the, the advantage line and they, they need go forward ball. And at the moment, just looking for the options. That's a very good run from Mauritius and uh, equally good. Oh. Needs to find the offload. Do the Mauritians had the support there and uh, unable to pass the ball. But there could have been a chance there. Seeing Sarah D. come around. One of the one of the few chances that Mauritius had the, had to run with the ball, but just being shepherded out into touch, not looking for those opportunities, to, not looking for the offload, needs to have a little bit more awareness of what's going on in the park. Well, we said that they had to learn, and those were one of the areas that they will learn from. It's just understanding that uh, as soon as she had done the good work of getting past the defender, he was looking for the offload to put away her teammate wasn't to be but they get a bit of a reprieve here because uh, Morocco have made a mess of their line out so it'll be a put in to Mauritius Sophie Jacques has the ball and an opportunity for them to maybe replicate how they started the second half but more importantly put some points on the board and crucially for Morocco back to seven ladies with El Gahalazi Gilan making back of the field after that yellow card What a steal from Morocco. And it's bounced back in favor of Mauritius. So still going. That's better from uh, Mauritius. Still going. Great little carry from uh, Domenage into the 22. And there's a penalty. Quick ball is what they need. Catch uh, Morocco on the hop. Sophie, Sophie Jacques with a quick tap and go. Referee pressures Pazani, putting them back five meters. Oh, just short now, Mauritius. Blind side, not really paying attention. But uh, it's Ichi Ju who will get over for the try, I think it is. Or number three, Zoli, will get over for Mauritius. And finally, they get some points on the board. It looked like they were doing absolutely everything not to score that try. Zwael having a go at it, uh, Ritter having a go at it, and eventually Zwael scoring that try in the corner. That was actually some fantastic defense there by Gislan. Gislan, who just come on after conceding that yellow card and spending two minutes in the sin bin. The conversion is not good from that far corner. Mauritius 5, Morocco 19. It's just under four minutes gone in this first half of this game.
Well, no, I don't know if there's enough time, Zam, for them to come back. But uh, you never know. Funnier things have happened. Nice deep kick. So they're going to push, as long as it doesn't run over the back, they're going to push uh, Morocco all the way back. And guess what? They're going to come all the way back to the middle. So unfortunate for them, that didn't work. Critical mistake, critical mistake. Possession is everything. After having that great scoring opportunity, Mauritius making a big mistake. What they've done there is they've kicked the ball dead. And it's going to be a free kick in the middle of the park with a Morocco attacking the Mauritians. Well, what a pity for the Mauritians. There's the little bit of space. So it's going to be another try for uh, Morocco. This one's going to be under the posts, and I think you can write off the Mauritians from here. Just as we called it, uh, possession being everything, uh, the Mauritians with an unforced error, kicking the ball dead after scoring a try. And it was an easy run in at the end for Mario Mazizi, stripping the defenses, defenders and defenses line and breaking through and scoring under the posts. Great try there for Morocco. Kick was good. It's 26 Morocco, Mauritius 5, with just under two minutes left to play in this game. Yeah, it's good night, nurse, I'm afraid. And deserved winners, Morocco. They have been the better side. Mauritius looking tired. They've uh, lost their structures. Now, a little bit of momentum as they get over the halfway line. But they... Uh, uh, yes, and he's holding on. Still going, Morocco. Recycling's good from the Moroccans. Backward says to the referee, so still going, but uh, no progress really. Kick and chase. And who's got the pace? At this stage, only favoring Morocco, but uh, a little knock on. So just a little scrappy end to this game here in uh, Gaborone between Morocco and Mauritius, but great to see. The ladies taking every opportunity and trying their hardest. A little chip and chase. We haven't seen a lot of kicking in that kind of scenario over the weekend. So uh, great to see them trying a few things here in this tournament. Saider Amak was very eager to get that ball. So eager that she lost her boot in the process. <laughs> Holding up Mauritius. And there goes the Hooter. So uh, that will be the end of uh, these two teams' competition. And the bragging rights will go to Morocco. That's over a couple of times that they've played against uh, each other, Morocco having won them. Still going. Surely someone's going to kick it out. And Precious Pazani calls time on this game. Morocco 26, Mauritius 5. Sounds like it's, it's been a bit of a case of Groundhog Day. Morocco winning this game here. Run off their feet completely. Once again, the final score there, Mauritius 26. Mauritius 5 and Morocco 26. Albeit the score is 26 to 25 to Morocco. We can see that um, the lots of tackles were made by Morocco. Working hard, the Mauritians definitely got them to work hard. Penalties, Morocco discipline uh, is a bit suspect in that game.
Seven penalties conceded with only four conceded by Mauritius. Visits into the opposition 22. Morocco utilizing those five visits into the opposition 22 very well. Scoring the 26 points and we see Mauritius at two visits but didn't quite get there. So it's been a great game of rugby today. Morocco and Mauritius. It's the penultimate game of the 2018 Rugby Africa Women's Sevens. It's for the bronze medal as Madagascar take on Tunisia. Both these teams disappointed that they aren't in the final, but still an opportunity for them to pick up silverware. And of course, that bronze medal is still a very, very prestigious achievement in this competition. It will be Tunisia that head into this game as slight favorites. A lot of people predicting that they would be in the final against Kenya, but uh, just going down to Uganda 12-5 in that semi-final. Tunisia, a very impressive team, ranked second coming into day two. Ch Uganda beating them in that game. Eventually, Uganda 10, uh, Tunisia 5 after having that draw in the previous day. So for the Madagascar side, a couple of standout players to look out for in the number six jersey, Raharari Malala, as well as look out for in the number two jumper, Rakotori Son. Plenty of play that is being uh, controlled by those two. In the Tunisian side, we spoke about an all tournament, Amani Garbi in the number six jersey. And also don't give too much space for Kulut Gamir to build up some speed because she is very, very difficult to stop. So it's Tunisia that will get us underway, playing from left to right, opting to go for the deep uh, kickoff. I think that if uh, Madagascar allowed that one to roll a little bit, they might have taken play back to the halfway mile, could might have gone over the dead ball line, but they're opting to play it on Madagascar. Also one of the teams of this tournament that really have exceeded expectations. Picked up at the back by Ravalolo Narina. Nice little uh, backline play here by this Madagascar side. On the good offload out of the back of the hand as well. Just uh, interrupted there by Halami Charada. And this could result in the first points. It's Islam Abdallah taking play into the 22-meter area of Madagascar. Numbers available for the left-hand side, on the left-hand side rather. But Halima Charada is opting to take on the defense herself. And she didn't release the ball in the tackle. So it's a penalty for Madagascar. This time they opting to run it from deep inside their own half. Rasoriri Malala with the nice little offload away to Raharari Malala. Gets the pass away back to Rasori Malala as well. This time intercepted by Tunisia. Madagascar just need to learn to hold on to the ball in the contact situation. Nice little offload this time to Huda Ben Abdel Jalil. And this is uh, very promising for this Tunisian side. It's going to be the opening score. And it's Umay Madiri who opens the account for Tunisia as they take a 5-0 lead. A very good passage of play. Decision-making, decision-making. Madagascar having the opportunity to let the ball roll out, choosing to play the ball. Instead, it could have been a free kick on the halfway line. Madagascar bringing the ball forward with some good attacking play and Tunisia defending well. Tunisia taking the opportunity and scoring a fantastic try. It has been a good passage of play, a good game of rugby so far. Yeah, only two minutes in and uh, Armani Garbi also adding the extra two points. And it all started deep inside the half of Tunisia, but so important, just make sure that you stay in support. And that's what Umay Madiri did so well. She was on the shoulder of Huda bin Abdel Jalil calling for the ball and over for the first points. Tunisia get us back underway. We start secured nicely by Nomenja Nahari. Running around a few defenders. She's got some good speed on her, just running a little bit sideways there. 
Good tackle coming from Chaima Arbi. The referee saying it's a little bit high, so penalty has been awarded to the Madagascar side just inside the half of Madagascar. Again, in the uh, handling and the contact situation, Madagascar not able to hold on. And now Islam Abdallah, good offload away to Mariam Mekni and then into the hands of Huda bin Abdul Jalil. Lima Chirada taking the ball into contact. A good strong tackle coming from Raharari Malala. Now a little bit of space for the Tunisian side to try and expose uh, this uh, Madagascar defense. A good run by Amani Garbi. She takes play into the 22. But the referee penalizing Tunisia. And it will be a penalty for Madagascar. Great passage of play by Tunisia. Looking for the offloads, looking for the defensive plays. Fortunately, at the breakdown, the referee ruling that they came in from the side there at that breakdown. It's been a good passage of play. This high-intensity rugby. Tunisians not letting the Madagascans out of their own half. This is also when it starts getting a little bit difficult for these players who aren't used to playing two days in a row. The bumps and bruises from yesterday starting to take its toll on their bodies so there's a change that has been made by the Udigask Madagascar side rather Rarari Malala making her way off the field but now it's available for Ramina Drisoa to Rasori Malala take it into contact by Rakoto Arison Madagascar need to make sure that they hold on to the ball here that's a sloppy pass and it's allowed Tunisia to pounce and the handling mistake has been made critical mistakes being made by the Madagascar and almost unforced most of the time but a very good defense being held by the Tunisians making sure that the Madagascans don't have an opportunity to play holding that defensive line they're not playing a rush they're being very patient letting the Madagascans come towards them it's a very easy and deliberate defensive pattern that they're playing not playing the rush not putting them under big pressure Mariam Mekni feeds and she gets it out. A little bit of a messy scrum. Umaya Diri taking the ball into contact. Jarada picks it out at the back. Jarada almost gets through the half gap. She gets the offload away to Abdallah and then into the hands of Mekni. Back it goes to Diri. Abdallah gets the pass away to Jarada. A little bit of selfish play is spilled by the Tunisians, but now Venshi does go wide to Chaima Arbi. She gets the pass away as well. And Tunisia is so close to the try line now. Good hands for Islam Abdallah. She lands just short. She rolls over. The referee says she uses her momentum. And it's Tunisia who go over for their second. A great try, a great try indeed. Very good patience, very well worked by the Tunisians. Constantly looking for the opportunities, looking for the offloads, the great supporting runners. This is actually a showcase of how seven should be played. Playing with the pace, playing with intensity, but at the same time looking for the offload, supporting and backing up the players. A lovely, lovely try scored by Islam Abdallah. Unfortunate with that kick there hitting the posts. As you can see, the work up and the build up to the play, constantly looking for the player there, and it is tackled by the line, and she rolls over Islam Abdallah, getting additional points for Tunisia, and indeed a just reward for them with the work, with the pressure that they've been putting on this Madagascan team. Just enough time for the restart to take place in this first half. But at the moment, it does look like it's Tunisia who are on their way to picking up their second bronze medal in a row. Last year in their home tournament, they had to settle for third place. Ball again thrown away by Madagascar just as they look to go on the attack. And it will be a knock on both ways. So that should be the end of the first half. And it is.
and it's Tunisia with a healthy 12 0 advantage. That last passage of play, Johan, was a bit of was like a joke. Knock, knock. <laughs> and it's half time going into the oranges of Tunisia 12, Madagascar 0. Tunisia are doing well to pick themselves up after that uh, semi-final defeat against Uganda. They really weren't happy. They felt uh, a few things didn't go their way. And uh, certainly in this game so far, dominating on the scoreboard and also asking Madagascar to do all the defending. And it's uh, Madagascar at the moment, their own worst enemies. Those three handling errors costing them every time they just uh, string a couple of phases together. They are not able to ball on it and they hand the ball back to Tunisia. Did Madagascar having it all to do here, making those tackles galore, but missing tackles is giving opportunity for Tunisia to break that defensive pattern, ping them back, visits to the opposition 22. Tunisia has had four, they've basically been camped in the opposition 22. Madagascar hasn't made a single visit. And the ball boys there, uh, making sure that the game of sevens continues quickly. Using those balls as a bit of a pillow right now, but uh, it's good to see them running around and enjoying. The sevens can be very tiring, and it's tiring for all the people involved. It's two days of hard, hard work. Madagascar with the sun at their back in this second half. And uh, this time it's Tunisia with the early handling mistake. Madagascar realized that there's some silverware up for grabs. That bronze medal will look good earlier. And there's uh, Kulud Gamir, one of the players, very disappointed with their defeat in that semi-final earlier today but she really has been one of their standout players very very physical player strong tackle coming from Chaima Arbi and they've managed to turn the ball over as well good work at the breakdown by this Tunisian side picked up by Diri she gets the offload away to Charada Seeing that there's nobody back, she backs her pace as she puts the kick behind. Still giving chases to Rada, but oh, she does oh, almost does very, very well to keep the ball in field. But the assistant referee on the far side saying that the ball went out. That was a great bit of work by Charada. Halima Charada with that individual piece of play kicking the ball through and looked like she almost kept it in but unfortunately the tj on the far side indicating that she had gone into touch and it's going to be a line out for madagascar once again ping back into their own 22. good work at the line out by madagascar nicely taken there by rolila rivoliani So with a nice little run, almost making away, or she does make away just out of the 22, gets the offload away as well. Revololona. Back it goes to Rakoto Arison. Now it's Razana Mahepa. Perhaps a decision for the Madagascar would be to kick the ball downfield and to try their luck because they've struggled to get past this Tunisian defense which has been phenomenal throughout this tournament and just as I say that there's a nice break by Ravalolo Nerina that's excellent work from her she backed herself she got through the gap and she's also got plenty of speed she dots down under the sticks and with a relatively easy conversion this should be a five-point ball game how quickly sevens turns how quickly sevens turn that has been a fantastic try by Gina Rahadmilalala. Fantastic, fantastic, fantastic rugby. Stepping inside and stepping out. 
and taking on the defensive pattern, taking on the defenders and not being shy to play. This is the kind of rugby we saw Madagascar playing yesterday and it's good to see them coming back into this game and showing that they can play. There's a lot of rugby still left to play here. Stepping in and out, we see her backing herself, completely going through that defensive pattern and beating the defenders. Great try there for Gina Rahari Malala. Uh, Lima Charada there in the number eight jersey for Tunisia, the one who slipped the tackle. She'll be, she'll be very disappointed with that because Tunisia's defense uh, one of the better defense systems of this competition. Opting to change direction out for uh, Tunisia as it goes wide to Islam Abdallah. And this, again, the handling mistake coming from Madagascar. You can see how passionate these Tunisian players are. Oh, there Huda Ben Abdul Jalil. Every time they make a mistake, they really are disappointed. They feel they've let themselves down, their teammates down. This key indication of how seriously they take this, how, how important it is, like you say, Johan, it's important for the women's game to progress and it's important for them to be pushing forward and showing that same passion and getting the respect and appreciation as well as the women's game grows and progresses in Africa. Amani Garbi, the playmaker for Tunisia. Strong handoff on Razana Mahefa from her. And forcing the penalty as well. Coming in from the side of the rack says the referee. So Tunisia now looking to run this ball from inside their own half. They know one more try yet could settle this result. Chaima Arbi getting the pass away to Ben Abdul Jalil. Back it goes to Halima Charada. Playing backwards at the moment. Islam Abdallah needing to do the cleanup work. And now Ben Abdul Jalil almost getting past the defender. Back it goes to Umaima Diri. This looks promising for this uh, Tunisian side. And uh, nobody's going to stop her in this position. And this should settle this result. A great work from this Tunisian side, starting deep inside their own half, managing to go over for their third score. And it's Amani Garbi. It's a name we've heard a lot about throughout this tournament, and no doubt we'll be hearing a lot about Amani Garbi in the sevens game in Africa, and in particular in the women's circuit. Unfortunately, missing that kick, probably still a bit tired from that fantastic run. Beating the defender with the handoff and backing her pace, looking around, seeing if there's a covered defender coming across. No one was in close proximity to her, and Amani Gabi scoring that try. She does it all, does Amani Garbi. She scores a try, she converts, and then she runs back to take the restart as well. Sorry, Malala taking the ball into contact for Madagascar. Not going to be enough time for them to steal the win here, but there is enough time to try and score a consolation try. Well, it's strong work at the breakdown. Coming from uh, Rami Andresoa, the referee saying that was illegal though, so it goes to Terada. Nicely done uh, pass into the hands of Diri, and Diri's got so much speed to work with. Nobody's going to be able to stop her in that position. She goes over, she dots it down, and Tunisia ending this tournament on a nice high. Delight and relief for this Tunisian side as they know they will return home with the bronze medal around their necks talked about the passion we talked about the commitment of this Tunisian team the game is in the bag already but pushing hard pushing strong and coming through with that try Umaya Ziri I mean fantastic game of rugby 22 points to seven Madagascar won't be defeat won't be disheartened they've had a great tournament coming through as one of the lesser known teams in African rugby in women's rugby in particular coming against a powerhouse Tunisia This is definitely something we love seeing in the game, the camaraderie, the spirit as well. 
congratulating their opponents, albeit they are the defeated ones. Uh, Madagascar 7, Tunisia 22 in that a bronze match. Madagascar, a bron um, Tunisia, the bronze medal winners. So Tunisia, at the end of the day, will be disappointed with their bronze medal. They were hoping to compete in the final, but a very impressive performance in that uh, third and that bronze medal match as they uh, really outplayed Madagascar in most facets of the game. And uh, crucially as well, every visit to the opposition 22, they made count and they made the most of their opportunities. You can see the emotion on the faces as well. This is how much it means to these Tunisian players. Going around, giving their thanks to some of their supporters out here in Botswana. You can see the passion on the faces of these players. That's how much it means for them to compete here, and to represent their country here at the 2018 Rugby Africa Women's Sevens. So confirmation of the results of earlier, Botswana finishing in seventh position in this competition, beating Zambia and a great performance for them at home. The Zimbabwe also putting their earlier words behind them as they got the better of Senegal. Morocco victorious over Mauritius to make sure that they will be in action in the 2019 edition of this competition and it's Tunisia with the bronze medal. Plenty of action still to come. It's the big game. It's the one that everybody has been waiting for. It's the final. Phone your friends, phone your family, tell them to tune in. It's Uganda coming up against Kenya. And that will be coming your way on Kwese Sports at 15.26 Central African time. Don't go anywhere. Stay tuned in to Kwese Sports. After 23 matches, only two teams are still standing. It's Kenya and Uganda who have been too good for the other eight sides, but only one of them can be crowned champions of Africa. The stats suggest it's Kenya's turn to lift the cup after finishing runners-up four years in a row. But stranger things have happened in the game of Sevens Rugby. We're just about to conclude this competition, but the most important match of the competition still awaits. And that is why most people are still sticking around. They want to see these two top sides on the African continent compete for the 2018 Rugby Africa Women's Sevens competition. This is the top try scoring nations of the competition. It's Kenya dominating in most facets of the game. They've scored 25 tries and they also have a pretty good conversion rate in terms of the game of sevens. Uh, Tunisia will be a little bit disappointed that they weren't able to make it through to the final. They eventually finished with the bronze medal and uh, Morocco, Madagascar and Zambia completing the top try scoring nations in this competition. Still an absolutely beautiful day here in Khabarone as most people are still enjoying the warm weather and the very, very good rugby. 
It's Kenya's road to the final that started with a victory over Senegal, another comfortable victory over Madagascar yesterday. They weren't really tested on day one and a little bit similar in the quarterfinal clash as well. Kenya far too out strong for the Zambia side and then their first real test came against Madagascar but Kenya dominating even that encounter and now an opportunity for them to test themselves against Uganda in the final. This is how Uganda managed to get into the last two. They comfortably beat Zimbabwe, but yesterday they were struggled against the Tunisia side and eventually had to settle for a draw. They started today with a hard-fought victory over Senegal, but where they really played their best rugby was in that semi-final where they managed to overcome Tunisia, who came into these, this tournament as one of the favorites, and they progressed with a 10-5 victory, and that has set up a beautifully a battle between these two big rivals. It's Kenya and Uganda. So most people are still waiting around for this final 14 minutes. Liam, these two teams deserving to be in this final. Absolutely. Based on today's performances, Kenya been good all weekend, but Uganda really putting through on, on day two with some fantastic performances. This really is an East Africa affair. The Kenya squad, look out for Michelle Omondi and Grace Adiamba. I mentioned her this morning. She was a prolific try scorer yesterday in Philadelphia, Orlando. Very strong squad from Kenya going into this final. And this Ugandan side have been led very well by Charlotte Medula in the number two jersey. She's their most experienced player. And we also heard their coach say earlier today that only two of these players have featured in a final. So a different type of occasion for most of these players. But Charlotte Medula, one of these, the two players, who certainly has featured in a final. And they'll be looking to make the most of her experience. And they, as they try to cause an upset here in the final to try and get over the line and beat Kenya in the final of this Rugby Africa Women's Sevens. Botswana slaying around to see some of the other teams competing. They did very well in this competition, really did their nation proud. And it will be Kenya in their red kit. Smiles all around at the moment. They feeling very relaxed and comfortable. And that's always a good sign for a coach to see the two, the players, uh, your players rather, in the tunnel feeling relaxed, feeling ready for a big game. Yeah, an important mindset going into a final, which is everything to play for. And uh, finals at all, at all competitions go down to small margins. And it's all about accuracy. This is an all East Africa affair. So expect a very intensive game. For most teams staying around to witness this final, it's been such a great opportunity for these teams to get to know each other to perhaps to also to learn from each other most of them stayed in the same place and uh, really it's an opportunity for for friendships to be formed but this is what it's all about the final 14 minutes of this competition and this an opportunity for one of these sides to make history neither of them have lifted this cup and Kenya have always had to settle for runners up is this their year to finally break their drought and to get their hands on that coveted trophy. Special moment as well for all these players as they are able to represent their country, but not only that, they're able to sing their national anthem in front of their fans that have made the trip to Botswana to come and watch them. And singing the national anthem always just does stir the emotions and uh, it's a really a special moment for these players.
special moment for all these players on the field. Uganda and Kenya representing their nations and an opportunity for them to sing their national anthem on this big stage. It's the final of the 2018 Rugby Africa Women's Sevens. Also a great opportunity for the referees as well. And probably her biggest game of her career that she will be taking charge of. So it all comes down to these final 14 minutes as we see Kenya saying a few last words. There's not too much that is, uh, still needs to be said at this, at this stage, Liam. No, a lot of it would have been covered in the change rooms as they talk about the tactics going into this game and it's really just that last minute motivation if you need any motivation in this final. So Uganda to get us underway, Juliet Nandawula with a nice kickoff and uh, almost one back, but it's available now for this Kenyan side. Kenya will look to get off to a good start in this game. They know that if they get a little bit of momentum on their side, they will be unstoppable. But on this occasion, just kicking possession away. Good work at the breakdown, though, as they manage to secure the ball and force the penalty as well. They will be advantaged as the Ugandans went back 10, but they might not need it, this Kenyan side. It's Michelle Omondi down the right-hand touchline. A terrific way for this Kenyan side to open the scoring. 30 seconds in, and they are in the lead. Well, you saw the speculative kick behind from Kenya. They noticed from the kickoff that there was no sweeper in the backfield, so clever option for them. Wasn't quite a great kick. Uh, didn't quite go as they would have wanted, but they did attack that breakdown, turned the ball over, and then you're not going to stop Omondi as she gets going. She only needs a little bit of space. Two meters from the touchline, and uh, a 40-meter try from her. Great start for Kenya. Yeah, you see the quick tap that came from the uh, penalty from the breakdown and that lady Omondi, she doesn't need a lot of space. She knows her way to the try line. Fantastic finish by her. Uganda will make, I need to make sure that they don't let their heads drop here. We're just waiting. There's an injury. One of the Ugandan players receiving a little bit of attention. It's uh, Emily Lukuru. I'm sure the coaching staff will want to make sure that she stays on the field. She has been vital for them in getting them to this position, into the final of the competition. But Uganda will need to make sure that they don't let their heads drop here. The restart not going the 10. A real opportunity for Uganda now as uh, Peace Marembe runs forward to take this tap quickly. Taking on the defense herself, a strong handoff. Picked up now at the back by Mudula. Into the hands of Nanda Wula. Changing direction is Nanda Wula. She gets it back to Charlotte Mudula and that number two jersey has been so important. The weight goes to Juliet Nanda Wula again. Away to Grace Alma. Down this right hand touchline now, an opportunity for Uganda as they edge their way closer to the try line. A little bit of space available for this Ugandan side. Opting to not spread the ball was Peace Marimba. Rather taking on the defense, but Kenya very strong in that position. And now ripped in the tackle as well. And this could be a race all the way to the try line. And it will be another score for Kenya. It's going to be Janet Okello. She used to be a sprinter back in the day. And you can see why. She's got so much speed. Absolute delight on the bench as well. Kenya are in the lead 10-0. Outstanding pace from Kenya. You just see the strip and the tackle. They held her up. Try to create that mini more that that once you've held that up, it goes to a, a scrum to the team that held the player up. But they're just able to strip her away. And uh, no defense from her. Uh, no defense in her way. She sprinted to the try line under the poles. Conversion is successful. And uh, Kenya go 12-0 up. Yeah, you just see a little bit of a mini mall in the midfield. And uh, she comes away with it, Okello. Too much pace for the uh, Ugandans and under the poles converted. It's almost like Uganda haven't quite pitched up for this game yet. 
unfortunately they do have a second half but another silly mistake from this uganda side it's emily lukuru it just it looks like a lapse of concentration losing the ball forward and grace adiambo taking it quickly now good offload away to cynthia not back 10 says the referee and this could be uh, trouble for some of these ugandan players might just be a warning very indisciplined there from Uganda. Lots of energy, a lot of determination to try and stop this Kenyan attack, but they've got to be disciplined, keep the penalties to a minimum. Nice long pass from Cynthia to Michelle Omondi, and Michelle Omondi stepping away over the try line. The coach will be happy with that. His team is 17 0 up, and Uganda have a mountain to climb if they want to work their way back in this match. Well, Ma Michelle Omondi doesn't need any invitation to find the try line. She knows how to get there, beats a couple of defenders, and uh, you really feel that Kenya have started this game very strongly. Here you see the pass going wide, just stretching that Ugandan defense. Omondi steps inside that defender, beats the other one, and uh, gets over for a second try. You'd think that one more try here from Kenya will really settle this match. And finally, Kenya will get their hands on the, the trophy. Will be a little bit of a hollow victory with South Africa not yet. Last four years, South Africa have won it. But I think when they, if they do get their hands on the trophy, I don't think they'll, they'll worry about that too much. And they've certainly deserved this uh, trophy if they manage to get it. It looks like another opportunity for them. Philadelphia Orlando not able to hold on. She had the try line in front of her. You just see the Uganda being held up in the tackle twice now in this first half, and they just need to adjust their body tilt as they go into contact. Otherwise, they're going to be losing a lot of possession. They did start well in attack in the first couple of minutes, pushing the, the Kenyan defense around the field, but support is key for Uganda. They've got to get their support players close to the ball carrier. Opting to kick the ball behind the line of Kenya, but not a real chase from the Ugandans, and it's made life too easy for the Kenya. Michelle Omondi again trying to get around on the outside. Back to Cynthia, then to Okello. Opting to change direction again to Michelle Omondi. Michelle Omondi brought to ground by Emily Lukuru. Picked up at the back by Cynthia. Now spreading the wall wide are oh, Kenya. Trying to get through the gap, and that's excellent work by Janet Okello. She steps on the outside as well. And Janet Okello has another try to her name. And Kenya now 22-0 in the lead against Uganda in the first half. And very difficult for Uganda to work their way back after this. Well, it's a killer blow in terms of the scoreboard for Uganda, but what quality play from this Kenya side. The fantastic pass. If you look at that pass, nearly 10 to 15 meters, and that just give Okello the chance to step inside and outside. Great swerve. And uh, when she's on her way, it's going to be difficult to pull her back. Grace Ariambo with the conversion attempt that's going to fall short and wide. So the halftime score is Kenya with a strong advantage over Uganda. And it's Janet Okello. If you, as soon as you give her a little bit of space to work with, she's able to expose you. She steps on the outside, steps back in the inside, and again on the outside. And Janet Okello goes over for try number four for Kenya. And that's allowed them to open up a 22-point lead at halftime. Uganda have been asked to make most of the tackles in this uh, first half. Nine of them, four of them missed, four of them resulting in Kenya going over. 
And also, if you look at those visits to the opposition, Kenya making use of every single opportunity. Something that Uganda need to get right in the second half is they need to try and get their hands on the ball and then just uh, try and hold on to it for a little bit, try and set up a few phases if they want to stand any chance of picking up a win. We've seen it happen many times, Liam, when a team sets out a goal. The coach said earlier their goal was to get to the final. They managed to achieve it. They played at their best against Tunisia. But all of a sudden after that, there's just a drop in concentration. Uh, 22 points down doesn't put them out of this competition. That's easy to draw back in, uh, in a seven minute half of sevens. But it's up to their performance now. They haven't been accurate with their possession. They've, their defense has been broken several times. But this is a chance for them to get possession now. Early in the second half, right from the kickoff. And you're going to have a chance to play their way into this game. What can you do, Uganda do with ball in hand is Emmanuel Aroma. Also used to be a 100 and 200 meter sprinter back in the day. Takes the ball into contact. Now it's available as they opt to spread it wide. First time that Juliet Nandawula has an opportunity with a little bit of space in front of her. Picked up by Charlotte Medula at the back. Number Lume taking the ball into contact. Picked up again by Juliet Nandawula. And this uh, almost getting through the gap, and she does manage to get through the gap as well. That's uh, This is looking very promising for this Ugandan side. They've got space to work with down this right-hand touchline. Emmanuel Aroma with the handoff on Michelle Omondi, but Omondi managed to hold on to the tackle. Picked up now by Emmanuel Mufua. And now Kenya very, very quickly in there to try and hold that ball up, but Uganda have managed to get the ball onto the ground, which means they're able to play it now. Grace Alma opting to change direction. She gets the pass away to Charlotte Medula. Picked up by Nanda Wula. A little bit uh, playing backwards at the moment of oh, this Ugandan, is this Ugandan side as Makatiwa Nabulumi. So as the dummy takes it into contact. Now it's Juliet Nanda Wula. Long pass over to Grace Alma. Now an opportunity for Emily Lukuru down the left. Lukuru gets the pop away as well. That's great work as she hands it away to Grace Alma. And Uganda needed to score first in the second half. They've managed to do so and they've kept their chances of pulling off a comeback alive. That's exactly what the Ugandan coach was talking about at halftime. Just making sure that their support is close to the ball carrier. Did narrow the attack up a little bit, but at least they're keeping the ball in the rucks and just bashing away at that Kenyan defense. Eventually get they all float off the ground. Here you see it. Just that little offload off the ground. Two tacklers in on the ball carrier and allows Nakuru to go in for the score. Yeah, concentration, and that's a great conversion attempt as well. Yesterday, Uganda didn't manage to slot many of their conversions, but this one could be crucial come the final few minutes of this game. And it's so important, uh, we've speaking, been speaking about it throughout this tournament, is for the supporters to stay close to the player with ball in hand, and Grace Arma doing that exceptionally well. Kenya now looking to strike back. Grace Adiambo, good little inside pass. But she's uh, not able to hold on to it is Camilla Cynthia. So it will be a scrum for Uganda on that left hand side of the field and an opportunity for them to spread out their back line towards the right hand side. With three and a half minutes to play. Uganda have got possession of the ball, but you do feel that they're going to need to score from this position or the very next position that they get in this game. Otherwise, it's going to be too far for them to go to pull this back because it is two converted, three converted tries 
three tries at least to uh, come back into the game. But Kenya have the possession. Penalty going the way of Uganda. Offside after that handling mistake and Uganda still trying to fight their way back in this match. It's Emily Lakuru. Great offload in the contact situation to Charlotte Medulla. And this time the penalty going against Uganda. Infringement at the breakdown. And on the bench looking on anxiously. They know that they're slowly running out of time. Every second that ticks away on the clock means that they won't, that they're already struggled to work their way back into this match. They need to score three more times, but Kenya now with an opportunity to perhaps wrap up this victory. Strong hands off coming from or Camilla, Camilla Cynthia, rather. She makes her way to just short of the 22. Still moving forward are this Kenyan side. It's now Michelle Omondi showing great strength. Brought down just short of the try line. Kenya need to find support now. Picked up by Grace Adiambo. And then good offload into the hands of Philadelphia Orlando. Orlando also brought just short. This is good scrambling defense by this Ugandan side. Grace Adiambo now... Seeing that there's space available for Lynette Morash, he steps on the inside, and that should be the try that secures Kenya the trophy. Kenya showing all the athleticism that's got them to this final, and it looks like they will go ahead and win this Africa Cup. A number of chase backs from Uganda just to try and stop this Kenyan attack, which is just a huge onslaught of athleticism and pace and ability to stay on their feet in the tackle and offload. It just allows Mora a very easy try and a very easy run in. Conversion to come from Kenya. And it's a great kick. Takes Kenya 29-7 up. Less than a minute to play and you look you would say that this is it for Kenya. As you can see that Ugandan defense just drawn in too tight. And Mora didn't have much to do to dot that down. Sarah Uluchi now on the field, having an opportunity to play in this final. Go home and tell her friends and family that she featured in this game where they won this 2018 Rugby Africa Women's Sevens Trophy. It really has been a very, very professional performance by the Kenyan side. And it will be a very, very well-deserved celebration for them tonight. Uganda still looking to perhaps end this game on a high note. Emily Lukuru gets the pass away. And that's gone forward and also in an offside position as Juliet Nandawula picks the ball up. And Kenya will try to finish off this game in some style. Good hands into the 22. But that is how this match will end with a knock-on. But it's not going to matter because it is Kenya and the celebrations will begin a very, very well-deserved victory for this Kenyan side, showing that they are right up there on the continent and that they really have the ability to become a powerhouse in women's rugby all over the world. Yeah, you feel that they've just been the form side throughout these two days of sevens and they finish on a strong note, but on the whole, Uganda were competitive, slightly outplayed in this final, but a great place for them to be to make a final get that experience of of playing in one of these big games and uh, a good way to finish for kenya high fives all around janet okello she's really led this side very very well grace ariambo there in the number 10 jersey lynette moran the number 14 jersey as well and a very good balance in this kenyan side they've got a lot of speed out wide but also strength in the middle but their skills have been very impressive and it's Kenya who finished off this tournament with a strong 29-7 win over Uganda. The story of the 14 minutes, it's Kenya dominating on the scoreboard, but they were asked to make a number of tackles in this game. Uganda certainly had the opportunities, Liam. 
Uh, they did, and they just weren't able to keep the ball for long enough, particularly in the in the first half. They were 22 nil, nil, nil down at half time, and that's a uh, an Everest to climb uh, for them. But uh, certainly performed better in the second half and just improved as they went through it. Maybe some nerves involved in that. Maybe their first African final. They've got to have that, that under their belt now, and they can continue to grow their sevens in the country. The Ugandan players just thanking everybody that came out to support them. Yeah, and now an opportunity for Kenya to also go and do the rounds, and I'm sure they'll enjoy the celebrations with their fans that have made the journey to Botswana to come and witness this uh, trophy that they will lift for the very first time. It's a very, very big moment for women's rugby in Kenya, and they will only continue growing in this game. Camilla Cynthia there, also one of the players that we haven't spoken about too much in this competition, but she quietly went about doing her work and she played a very, very important part as well. And you can see some of the supporters also coming in to join in the celebrations. And great to see their appreciation for the fans as well. Not the end of the journey for Kenya, still on a development curve for themselves. They were really ambitious to get into the World 7 Series as one of the core teams, and that happens every year in Hong Kong. And uh, they'll be building towards that next year. And uh, in my opinion, they've certainly got the potential to do that. Players will continue enjoying these moments, and uh, this is the the few minutes that you really cherish one day that you when you hang up your boots you look back at what you've achieved and I'm sure that these moments will come back to this Kenyan side they've worked extremely hard for this win and it's been a long time coming four years in a row that they finished runners up that would have been very very bitter and finally a sweet reward at the end of that long journey they are able to get their hands on this coveted trophy Plenty of uh, good things to smile about for the Uganda as well. Charlotte Medulla, the captain, will be quite proud of her efforts, On uh, especially today. Yesterday they struggled a little bit, but today when it really mattered against Tunisia, they were able to get the upper hand over Tunisia and progress to the final. So we're going to head down now for the post-match presentation. Dirk Fulyun is standing by on the field. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the post-tournament presentation for the Rugby Africa Women's Sevens Tournament here in Gaborone, Botswana. Before we start, I'd like to welcome our presentation party, starting closest to me here on my left, Mr. David Gilbert, Vice President, Rugby Africa. Next to him, Mr. Bradley Basson, Executive Member, Rugby Africa. Mrs. Colleen De Jong, Executive Member, Rugby Africa. Ms. Katie Sadlier, World Rugby, General Manager, Women's Rugby. Mr. Lesedi Kaikai, the President of Botswana Rugby. His Worship, Kahiso Tutwe, Mayor of Gaborone. Mr. Wayne Torreson, KFC Botswana. Mr. Martin de Klerk, Marketing Manager, Avani Hotel, Gaborone. Thank you for joining me, ladies and gentlemen. Without further ado, they will receive their medals a little bit later, but acknowledgement, collecting the bronze medal, congratulations to Tunisia. The silver medalists for this tournament and losing in the final to their neighbors. Congratulations to Uganda picking up the silver medal. But ladies and gentlemen, the winners here in Gaborone for their 29-7 victory over Uganda in the final and to collect their medals from Mrs. Colleen de Jong, Executive Member, Rugby Africa, and Ms. Katie Sadlier, World Rugby General Manager, Women's Rugby. Ladies and gentlemen, your victors, Kenya.
Very, very well-deserved medal for this Kenyan side. Janet Sokelo, Grace Sadiambo, Philadelphia, Orlando, some of the standout players, with, uh, as long with Michelle Omondi. And these players really have the ability to become world-class stars in this women's game of sevens. I've been so impressed with the athleticism of the Kenyan players and the skill levels, their understanding of the game. Very tactically astute as they've played through this tournament, very much the dominant side throughout this competition. And I know they're very ambitious about getting onto the Women's World Seven Series and uh, the potential is certainly there for them. As you said, the journey doesn't come to an end yet. Now preparations will already begin for the next tournament next year and that will be an important one where they can secure qualification to the 2020 Tokyo Olympics where they have an opportunity to represent the continent on the world's biggest sporting stage. But for now, they'll enjoy this moment and uh, it really is a, a very, very well-deserved opportunity for this Kenyan side to, to celebrate with their, their team, their teammates, their friends and also their supporters. Very, very well deserved win for Kenya. And it really is a, a piece of silverware that they that they will cherish forever. We're going to head back down to Dirk Fulian. Philadelphia, congratulations to you and your team on a fantastic victory today. You must have enjoyed uh, the victory. So much. It was a good game against Uganda. Philadelphia, you came here as Kenya as the favourites. If we turn back the clock last year in Tunisia, the World Cup qualifiers unfortunately fell just short to South Africa. But definite favourites here in Botswana. What was key for you, regardless of the fact that the expectation you were going to win, what was key for Kenya in this tournament? Our target was to win and to take the trophy back home. That was our main target. It took teamwork and effort to get this trophy today. We did notice as well a couple of debutants, so an opportunity to get uh, experience for a deeper pool of players in Kenya as well. Was that an objective? Uh, it, it, it was not easy for us when we started, but we believed in ourselves and we went so hard and we, we believed we, we were going to take this trophy this season. And your thoughts here in Botswana, women's sevens rugby going around Africa, first time in Botswana. Have you enjoyed your time here? Yeah, it's been an awesome weekend and we really enjoyed it. Well, I tell you what, you've deserved that medal. I'm going to ask you to go and collect your trophy from Mr. David Gilbert, the Vice President of Rugby Africa. So if you can go and collect your trophy. Thank you so much. Correct. So go Philadelphia, get your trophy. If uh, the Kenyan side, if you're ready. If you could move to the front there as well and your team can join you. Ladies and gentlemen, the champions of Rugby Africa Women's Sevens Tournament, Gaborone, Botswana, 2018, Kenya! And with that, it comes to an end this special weekend here in Botswana. I'm sure the celebrations will continue long into the night. Don't forget the Rugby Africa Gold Cup is coming up onto your screens in June. That's when it gets underway. A spot at the Rugby World Cup is up for grabs. It will be Namibia, Zimbabwe, Kenya, Uganda, as well as Tunisia and Morocco all competing to be crowned Rugby Africa Gold Cup winners and book their spots where they will represent Africa at the Rugby World Cup. But for now, here in Botswana, it will be in the, this uh, tournament coming to end in, and the celebrations will continue. But from everybody here at Quest Sports, it's goodbye.